made a Facebook post and you were like, well, what was the lesson? Mm. And I was like, what do you mean what's the fucking lesson? I almost burnt my house down. And it was like, <laughs> <laughs> in the moment, in the and moment I was yeah, like, she was like, is Matt fucking serious? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of the Tattoo Guardians podcast. I am extremely excited to bring this one to you, as it is none other than my little sister, Mrs. Jamie Carino, and her husband, Pete Carino, two powerhouse tattoo artists that I love and adore, who happen to travel the world and tattoo together in an RV. We get to sit down with them today and talk about what it's like being a tattoo artist on the road. Let's do this. Oh my gosh, good shit. So, you were saying tonight's episode we should talk about pussy. Is that what you wanted to do, Kyle? Yeah, you know. Yeah. Just all, all the time. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Happy day. Jeez. It's happening, guys. We talked about starting a podcast, and it's happened. We talked about having these beautiful people on and it's happening even cooler than what we thought because they're in the flesh <laughs> my god josh has been maybe we can do in. a part two when we get to oregon fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> josh has been manifesting yeah you know thanks I for manifesting been. this josh yeah i literally like i set my alarm to take my medication and instead of saying take medication because it pops up on your phone yeah. it's like i just manifest shit yeah. You know, yes. Add a couple inches to my dick, whatever. You know, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Positive thoughts only. Right. So good. <laughs> Pictures or it didn't happen. Right. <laughs> well, it's something these two guys have been doing, which has got me inspired, is they have been setting notifications on their phone that'll pop up, like good reminders t- reminders to themselves. Yeah. Oh, right on. like positive affirmations. Yeah. Or, Right? Haven't you guys? Yeah, I, I, I really do yeah. do that. Like it'll say, you know, you're cancer free. You fucking did it. You beat it. You beat oh. cancer. So that's instead of saying like it's time to take oxy, I, I see that. Yeah. And yes. honestly, like it, it's it, even it just in my head, it does. It's making me feel fucking way better. You know? Yes, yeah. Yeah. So, well, right. I mean, like I don't know if you guys saw, but it was like a study a while ago of like plants at a high school where there was like one plant where they were like intentionally speaking kind words to this plant. Yeah. And then the other one, of course, they weren't. And like it actually did have positive effects on it. And yeah. I've never seen that. It like, was flourishing. That got yep. spoken to positively. And it's. I think just, they even yelled at one of them. Yeah. 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 That one declined. Yeah. Pretty quickly. That, yeah. So it's really interesting so to see that. Me, I know. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's give and take, give and take. Right. No wonder where all these grays are coming from. <laughs> they're, they're platinum. <laughs> the platinum, yeah. The yeah. Platinum. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Did you have uh, any direction on your heart? You know, some of our fans, you know, want would love to hear about, uh, you know, couples that work together, the yeah. ins and outs, the do's and don'ts, you know, the, the fucking hellacious bumps in the road how to overcome them but just because you guys are a couple that work together doesn't mean that has to be tonight's topics you know all oh, we, can jump, we can jump into everything yeah 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 because yeah, yeah, they're, totally. they're literally living in an rv they're traveling to yeah we, have a home, we can't so. yeah. we can't get away from each other <laughs> yeah, you right. know we're stuck in this rv together unless yeah. you want to take the jeep and you know ride off yeah. Into the sunset somewhere, like <laughs> yeah, like I'll go to Kings stuck. Island by myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's as so okay. yeah. I mean, uh, first thing is is brutal honesty. Yeah. You know so, that comes along with the relationship and the tattooing. Love it. Okay, we'll yeah. pause. Let it sounds like we're ready to go. Are you ready? Oh, Are you I thought we were answer? going. Yeah, I I'm too. Going. We're going we're live. <laughs> okay, great. Sorry, I'm late to the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm on. You poured a drink. We're good. Let's go. <laughs> okay, we're good. Okay, we're good. Uh, Mike, you don't even have to edit that out. You know, we'll let the whole world know I'm fucking. Jamie, fucking and he hasn't even hit my weed yet. <laughs> yeah. 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 Maybe he did. I like you said yeah, yeah. 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 I guess to start, we we met what 15 years ago in New York, Staten Island, New York. Uh, yep. Mm. I um I Shout was just doing I was doing a guest spot at a shop, uh, Bullseye Tattoo, and he was working there and. Um, you know, I had just gotten out of like a messy relationship and he had gotten out of like a really long relationship as well. So <clears throat> we were, you know, friends and it eventually turned into more, but it was challenging because, um, 
you know, like you have a, a normal boyfriend or normal girlfriend and like they don't understand what tattooing is and mm. you likely don't understand what, you know, their job entails as well or that's what I've experienced anyway. And so like us being able to to connect with tattooing was always really cool. But at the same time, it's like, well, shit, you're together like all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we were fortunate enough or unfortunate, whichever way you want to look at it, that we've worked together the entire time. We've never worked independently for other shops or anything, um, you know, separate from each other. So wow. that's been an interesting like for 15 years. From we literally day one. From day work one. Work together, day live one. together, yeah. travel together, you know, so at this point, it's probably some some level of like unhealthy codependency we have going on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that we could actually function without each other. Mm. Well, we to tried a degree. and it didn't work. It didn't yeah. work. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, mm -hmm. it does definitely come with its struggles. It comes with its advantages. You know, mm -hmm. um, people are always like, when we go to a convention and they're like, oh, well, you know, I made X amount of dollars. And, and it's like, yeah, well, we made double that. Right. <laughs> and we only have, you know, the one cost of the, the booth or anything. So our expenses are down for that. And, you know, we make good money together doing that. Um, mm. Being able to pick up each other's slack as well, like, I know just recently we just worked the Indie Tattoo Expo um, in Plainfield like two weekends ago. Yeah. And the first day, uh, even though I had like set up my stuff the night before and I had all my stencils and stuff ready to go, um, there was just a lag of, you know, just those days where like everything, you know, your wrong. stencil doesn't go on correctly the first time or whatever mm -hmm. happens. So it was one of those days for me. It put me about an hour behind, which isn't the end of the world, mm -hmm. but he noticed it. And and was just like, didn't even have to ask me, you mm. know, like what he could help with. He just jumped in and started mm. doing things that helped me out. And it was like, you know, I couldn't have anticipated that. Like I couldn't have been like, hey, I need help because really, you know, who else is gonna know what I need done? Right. Who else is gonna know that I need stencil paper loaded into our stencil machine, mm. you know, stuff like that. So it was really helpful. In, mm. uh, in that manner for me. So yeah, mm. if you guys have any direct questions you wanna yeah. know or yeah, anything. And like, but... the, like I was saying before, the brutal honesty thing was a, a huge thing, not just with our relationship and working together, yeah. but it goes with our art as well. Yeah. Like you can only grow so much if everything you do, if you, oh, how does that look, baby? Oh, that looks great. Oh, right. that looks great. That yeah. looks, hey, no. Which often you do. It looks do. great, but do this to it, do this to it, do yeah. this to it. Mm. I was doing a shoot for Inked Magazine Inked Mag in, in New, York. New York and I'm tattooing uh, this girl and I get done with it and I tell her to look at it. And she says, yeah, you know, it looks great, but do this, do this. And I go, okay, cool. And I went back and the guy that she was with, the, the, her boyfriend yeah. was like, you talk to him like that and he doesn't get like upset or offended or anything like that. Mm. It's like, no, that's like constructive criticism. Mm. I'm like, I'm not being a dick. I'm like, being I wasn't honest, mean about like, it. you know, like mm. this is what would make it look better or complete. Yes. Cause you know, tattooing when you're up close so long, yeah. your eyes fill in the stuff that's not done. So yeah. you step back. How many times have you done an awesome tattoo, took a picture of it, gotten home, looked at the picture and gone, fuck, I should have did that, yeah. that, that. That's what her eyes do. Yeah, because I'm not sitting Great. there and tattooing it all day. Good. You every, know, every single tattoo we do. Yeah. Hey, baby, check this out. Is there anything I need done mm. or anything like that? Am I missing anything? Mm. On no. your pre-production, or you're saying even and that when you're through calling the whole the process. To yeah. be yeah. honest, we, process. we do Stencil, our homework. Everything. You know, yeah. we do our designs and drawings uh, at night. Usually, the night before the appointment, we'll put our finishing touches on. And that's something we also do together while we're laying in bed. And yeah, we'll be like, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think about this? And it's cool because like because we have an understanding of of, you know, like you can always ask your significant other that's not in the industry, you know, like, hey, what do you what's your opinion on this? But like they might not know like the longevity of it mm -hmm. or that what it's going to look like healed. So mm -hmm. it's nice to be able to get that like creative, you know, Second bounce off of. Yeah. You know, so yeah. And I can absolutely attest because I've been there since the beginning. For those that don't know, Jamie is actually my little sister, like my real little sister. People are always like, oh, like your sister? And I'm like, no, I put her in the dryer, my sister. <laughs> so uh, I've been around uh, when Pete was, was brand new and, was, and I was like, well, am I going to have to put this guy in a headlock? Like, how is this going to work out? You know? Right, yeah. right. But, but they've always had that brutal honesty. They talk about it a lot. Um, I think it's genius. I think it's absolutely mm -hmm. genius. I've watched both of them become extraordinary tattoo artists. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. You know, as 
having a little sister tattoo, I, I was concerned, like, you know, like, you know, I'd already made a pretty good name for myself, and, like, I could kind of see her sort of living in the shadows a little bit, would you say, Jamie, at first? Yeah, definitely. And um, I, I love to tell this story because I saw her just growing and growing and growing, and I knew when she had really made it, when we, her and I were, we were in Texas walking around a tattoo convention, and somebody said, hey, can I get a picture? And I was like, Absolutely. And he handed me the camera so I could take a picture of him and Jamie. Oh, yeah. and I was just so yeah. fucking happy. Yeah. I was so happy that she had her own. Because she, you know, she, you know, Jamie Carino, people don't really know. It's, you know, yeah. she's my actual little sister. And yeah. um, I never wanted her to feel like she had to have that. You know, right. she, had, she needed her own identity. Yeah. And so she's gone through multiple ways of tattooing and. Uh, I was. I don't see her a lot. I was lucky enough to get to see her after t- two years at Evergreen, mm. and the growth is just ridiculous that she's mm-hmm. she's done. Mm-hmm. And I even Thank do that you. with her. She was showing me a tattoo that was beautiful, and I know she won't be upset. So she's like, "What do you think?" And I'm kind of yeah. quietly saying, "You know, I think you should do." And she mm-hmm. did a couple of those things, and I don't know why other people can't handle that. You know, like why would you ever want me to tell you, Matt, that something was good if it was mediocre? Right. Come on. That's man. that's kind of mind blowing to me, right? Yeah. So they call it brutal honesty. Uh, it's definitely traveled into me teaching my wife how to tattoo. We're extremely honest with each other. Yeah. Uh, as are we as a podcast. We've always yeah. been that way with each other. Yeah. I think I think that Hip is really good at taking his licks and, yeah. and growing from it. You know, and yeah. that's why he's grown so fast. So anyway, yeah. so yeah, I do think I've seen it happen, and I've seen it make them both grow monumentally. Yeah. Um, for those that are not familiar, please check out their work. What are your, what are your Instagrams? Just our names. Our names. Jamie and Pete Carino. Yeah. 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 Instagram.com. Um, yeah. So what I love about both of them is they have mastered the art of real, what I call real tattooing. I don't mm. give a fuck what your photo looks like. Mm. I want to see your healed picture. Mm-hmm. Mm. And that's where both Pete and Jamie have mastered that. Mm. Uh, so... You. Pete will even do a tattoo that like it's really nice, but you gotta wait till it's healed to really mm-hmm. see it flourish. Yeah, and then you mm-hmm. see it like two years later, and you're like kind of pissed because it's, <laughs> so, it's so. You've heard me talk. I've messaged you multiple times. You know, you walk around a convention, and you're like, "That's Pete." Not yeah. only did it only take him two hours, which is insane. And right, only, I was going to say, to add do, to it, he's fast as fuck yeah. and amazing. He's the fastest yeah. tattoo oh, artist that I've ever, I've ever met. Yeah. and he, But it's like, usually you're fast and like, I'm always like, you know, hey, did you take your time on that tattoo? Be a lot cooler if you had. But somehow, <laughs> Pete, somehow Pete is able to be better faster. I don't know if he should yeah. slow down. He's kind of just got it in the pocket, right? Yeah. yeah. And then Jamie, because she's explored so many options, again, not normal master of color master of black and gray it's like it's usually mm. one or the other yeah. they really got it together so yeah. as a podcast that talks about money as well yeah think about the beauty of this two yeah. high high tattoo artists high on multiple levels but they're literally doubling their money right yeah, yeah. like that's in, that's incredible yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So hats off to you guys for figuring that out. As somebody who's Thank always you. trying to yeah. find the next thing that will work for me, somehow Jamie and Pete have just like, they've come together in this way that makes a beautiful picture all around. Yeah. It really does. Thank you. Yeah. And now you have it with Nikki. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, that's, that's funny that you brought that up because I used to say, man, I'm jealous of Jamie and Pete. You know, mm. I, I, here's an example. We, we, just so you guys know, we're very, we're very open about talking about finances here. I don't yeah. like the whole, like, it's a weird, creepy thing. So we're going to talk about money for a minute. You guys are cool with that, of course, right? I don't, yeah, I don't give yeah. a fuck. Yeah. So I'm invited by Pete and Jamie to go to a guest spot in New York that yeah. they have been doing, like, regularly, like, once a month, going to this high-end shop. And they're making just buckets of money. And they're like, Jamie's like, come out, come out. And I'm like, that sounds pretty fun, you know? Yeah. And Pete had already been there. So I get there. I think it's maybe Pete's last day. So Pete leaves and Jamie comes in, right? Pete had already made like 15 grand nice. before Jamie even started. Yeah. Yeah. But she, she didn't even started. I'm yeah. going there and I'm making boatloads of money on one person and I'm like, they got 15 grand already. Yeah. <laughs> like, what a yeah. fucking genius move, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's so, cool too because, like, 
Um, yeah, I, I know that we've, I, you guys have had a show about it before about getting burnt out. Um, so it's nice because like we can both hustle and pick and, up each other's slack, like she was saying. Like, yeah, it goes it goes with the tattooing as well. But mm. yeah, like she'll tattoo for like two weeks solid and mm-hmm. take like some time off and then, yeah. okay it's time for pete hustle mode you exactly know? Yeah. yeah get in you can, and you can all, trade all off it's like that's, that's, yeah. a, that's like, a, like said, it's a beautiful thing like when we went i'm like you got to come to humble humble is so great <laughs> and you can yeah. for 24 hours <laughs> jamie and pete showed up and jamie it's like 11 at night and i'm going to the hotel and she's like i got an appointment at 3 a.m and at 4 a.m she just hustling and hustling hard <laughs> i literally it's like, i remember that it was super bowl sunday i took i i was booked and this woman was like, I have to get this tattoo. And I'm like, okay, it's going to be like four Three grand. In the morning and it's going to be five grand. She yeah. was like, okay, immediately. Yeah, I was <laughs> like, it's going to be at least this much. And I need a, a $500 deposit right now. And she was like, done. I was like, mm-hmm. oh my God. You were like, supposed I don't know to if I should have done that. So I know, right? And so I They're literally start tattooing work. her. They're, yeah. yeah. You know, I started it's tattooing inspiring. her. It's just, it's just fucking work, work, work. And like, There's I just. no like, retirement in tattooing. I love so, that yeah. so much. So to yeah. watch it happen with anybody. I'm just like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm tattooing at like, what was it? Five in the morning, I think we yeah. finished. Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah. But yeah. Wow. I took I mean, a if, you're gonna, if you're going to do that all that traveling show, yeah. and go to the show, why not yeah. fucking do that? Absolutely. I mean, you it know? offers it at any convention that's open 24 hours and you can do it. Why would you not? I know. I was like, it? like Man. It's, it's a in casino. the middle of Humboldt County. So mm. it's everybody's weed got money. country. Everybody everybody's has got cash. Money. Mm. You know, they can't yeah. put their money into the bank because it's federally illegal. Mm. So they're just walking around with just stacks. They just, they like want to spend it. You know, they don't even care. Do me. Yeah. Oh, whatever, okay. Whatever yeah. 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 It's a great show. Ted and Amy Marks. It's inked hearts. Yeah. Inked hearts. Yeah, Ted Naming. we love you at Ted Naming. We love Show's you. Yeah. fucking great. <laughs> wow. Great people on it. I think I'm going to do Inked Hearts next year. Man. It's phenomenal. Yeah. It's a really great show, and it's put on by great people. It's really a small show. It's in a beautiful place. But it, it really is. Yeah. It's really fun. Like, it it's is. just fun. You it know? They just know how to do it. You make buckets of money and have fun. It's like, uh, yeah, sign me the fuck up. And you don't you don't have right. to go anywhere since it's in the casino didn't, and it's a small casino. But it's, Cypress Hill play their ten year yeah. anniversary. Yeah. Like they got Cypress Hill to play. Right? Yeah, <laughs> in this that little tiny awesome. casino. Awesome. But yeah. like yeah. we didn't have to leave. You know the rooms were there, the restaurants were there. There's like a karaoke. They have like karaoke every Thursday and Sunday night, and it's which just is awesome because they're all wasted. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, but yeah, it's awesome. just a really great time. Um, but that's definitely one of the shows where we. You know, hustle really hard yeah, and so cool. and work really hard, and then but yeah, he he picks up my slack whenever I need it, and vice versa, and it's just nice to be able to have that. But yeah, you know. to have each other to like kind of lean on is such a nice thing, and yeah. that's Holy. now that Nikki's stepping in, it's like that. Like we were, you know, I'm putting my daughter through college right now. We went and toured the campus yesterday, and it's very expensive, and she's like, oh, rambling off these appointments that she's got because somehow she came out of the gate stupid good. Yeah. It's weird. And so she's like booked. She's like booking my clients. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 This mountain head girl that Josh already did. Uh, yeah. So she's just like, we look at her her finances, and I'm like, well, shit, you could pay for the college on your fucking own. Yeah. You know what I mean? So suddenly so, to have that just in, in, injected into our lives, it's like, man, the power the power couples that tattoo together. Whew. Yeah. What a yeah. Blast. yeah. And There's how, something there. You guys, I'm hearing that you can also not only like fill each other's tanks when one of you are running low yeah. and notice the need and meet it and even without having to talk right yeah uh in scenarios all couples all people it's the awareness game of knowing your strengths or not yeah and so do you guys would you say that you both handle your own shit and then support one another and fill gaps or is there one of you that's like you know the strongest at like consulting and handles consulting for both of you like so it's kind of gone back and forth so When we started, it was separate. And then once we really started to be known as like a power couple type thing, that's Mm -hmm. what we got called several times. It was like, okay, we got to kind of streamline some stuff. Mm. And so I I I say it all the time. People are like, what do you do? I'm like, I tattoo and smoke weed. She does everything else. Okay. (laughs) So So, like, he's just not, um, you know, I worked customer service before I tattooed, mm-hmm. so I've got that voice down when I want to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and you know, and he's I just have no not yeah, so right. great at it, and he just comes across as an asshole. 
more often than not an email or text mm-hmm. if he even answers you. Mm-hmm. All caps. And so, yeah. 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 So, <laughs> Somehow his computer only types in cap, like capital letters. Exactly. And people are always like, why are you yelling at me? And it's just this whole thing. So I'm like, why don't I just... Why don't I just handle this? And like, I think he had a couple of difficult clients or something. And I was like, oh, I, you know, I know this, I know how to handle it. And Mm. so I think it started with that. And then, you know, it was just like, it's just easier. You know, he doesn't, he he was like double booking himself and like just fucking up left and right. And Mm. I'm like, you know what? Let me just handle this part. I think I triple booked myself one day. I'm sure, (laughs) I'm sure he did. So then I started taking over. When did that timeline? So I want to say it was probably when we were tattooing in Indiana, when we had, when we we had moved um, back and had taken over one of the great American tattoo company shops, which is what Joshua and I had started together in 2005. Mm. Um, We took over the Franklin. We took over the Franklin shop. location. So I want to say it was probably shortly after that because okay. it was like, you know, it was us. It was it was our shop, our name on it. And I'm like, mm. this is a small town. We need to make sure that we're representing ourselves correctly and that, you know, not everyone can think Pete's an asshole. Like mm-hmm. somebody's got to like him, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um He's like, I don't so, give a fuck. Right. He, he genuinely doesn't. I don't. I, don't. Yeah. I really, really don't. So I'm like, as admirable of a quality as that is yeah. for business, yeah. you know, it's not always yeah. the greatest. So, um, so yeah, I would say probably like 10, 11, yeah. 2010, 2011, okay. probably started with that. And then, nice. um, yeah, I mean, of course, like if there was clients and stuff, um, that I was like, I don't even know how to address this. Mm-hmm. I would talk to him about it. There's other things where like he hates doing certain tattoos. Yeah. So I know that those tattoos he hates. So I don't even actually come to him anymore with those. Like, yeah. you know, if they're just like, I want five pocket watches on mm-hmm. a forearm. I'm like, I know that that's not something he's into. Yeah. He's like, I'll um, do four, but fuck five. Right. <laughs> 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 that's where I draw the line. Yeah. Um, but you know, it it, it had gotten it's to be a time point. Four twenty, right? Yeah. <laughs> All of them. Uh-huh. Um, it got to a point. So like, so we had you know been tattooing for fifteen years, owned our own shops and stuff for a while. Well, when we moved to Arizona, uh, well, about we moved to Arizona like eight years ago. Um, like three years ago we decided like hey we've got some free time we're gonna open a bar uh on top of tattooing full time Mm -hmm. and so that was when it became an issue because um i'm more of the business-minded person in the relationship which bars require that's like the most adult thing I've ever done is mm. like having a bar mm-hmm. <laughs> we've ever done. <laughs> but like all the like licensure I'll, and mm-hmm. all all of this stuff is very official, very serious. I'll never own a bar again. So mm. so I started to have to do a lot more work for the bar. Mm-hmm. And it was very difficult for me to keep up with both of our schedules mm-hmm. and tattooing full time and running the bar mm-hmm. and like advising our staff, our right. employees, like yeah. yeah, our employees. I was the go-to person, and I yeah. was like, "This is too much for me to handle." And like things were slipping through the cracks. I was messing messing up appointments and stuff like that. Mm. And so at that point, tattooing um, is always priority one. Mm. Yeah, always priority for both so, of you. For both, for, yeah, for both. Yeah. And so, so, just so you guys understand too, they sorry to interrupt you, Jamie. Yeah, yeah. They tattooed in this lo- in the same location in the daytime and then at night. Mm-hmm. It became yeah, a, a so very the space, successful bar. The space yeah, the bar was, was really, a private studio during The space was beautiful. Wow. It was really an old location. It had original brick. Um, the building burnt down in 1900, and it was one of like two or three buildings in the town that survived this great fire that burned the whole town down. Mm. So you could see the burn damage on the bricks. Mm-hmm. Very, the very building. historical part and of And there town. was a lot of, uh, it, it actually meant a lot to Jamie and I because Her I was born in Prescott. Dad. And yeah. my father was a bouncer all along that strip. Oh, wow. Guaranteed, he worked in that building at some yeah. point, right, Jamie? Or d- definitely drank there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. my dad's a big guy, and he'd throw people out. And it's, it's the history of knowing that their dad. Because I went and walked around and went and went into places, and I was like, "Holy shit!" I remember being five years old and playing yeah. right here. So wow. it was so cool that they were in this place that my father had been at. Definitely you know I mean? been so, in that so building. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So the space yeah. was really beautiful, and so like while the bar was really cool, you know, we had never had that before, so. Um, it's funny because people who had been going to the two, because it's been a bar forever, before we ever owned it, it was a bar for decades. Multiple bars. So people would come in to the space during the day 
to get tattooed and they would be like, when did you guys put that skylight in? And like, it's always been there. It's mm. always been there, but like people are only in there when it's dark and they're drinking and they don't see mm. these beautiful attributes to this building. Yeah. So we just uh, made the stage. We built the stage ourselves and we had the floor like wipeable because the main floor was really, really old, original wood. Um, and we just had like appointment only, you know, up there and wow. the space is full of windows and all the natural light coming in. And um, so we were able to do that during the day, knock out our appointments. The bar was only open on the weekend. So it was, uh, th we did a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, and then the rest of the time we were tattooing during the day. Mm -hmm. We did live entertainment because the entertainment didn't really do great during the week mm. uh, that day, those bars. So, and it was, we opened New Year's Eve 2020. New Year's Eve 19, or, like 2019, 2019, like going into 2020. So going into 2020. So we opened three months later, COVID hits. Mm. So, so like circling back to what started was it was just too much to handle. Much, and, yeah. uh, and so, yeah, uh, I was like, I think it was in November yeah. when I kind of hit a point in my life where I was like, something, things need to change. This and so, last November? This last November, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I was like, some stuff has to change and I need a little bit, uh, I need a lot a bit off a of my plate. Of plate yeah. <laughs> and uh, so we like reassess things then and he started taking over his appointments and handling it and stuff. And for a bit there, I was like so hands off. I'm like, I don't even want to see what he's tattooing. Like, mm. even though it's the same email, I have access to it. I was yeah. so detached from it. Mm. But people would then see me and they would be used to talking to me all these years. And they'd be like, why did you not answer my email? And I was like, this motherfucker's tainting my name again because he's not answering. <laughs> and they think they're talking to me. <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 no. You got to tell people that they're talking to you. Because <laughs> he still was like, you know, oh, Pete is available. You know? I, I'm typing in the like third person. So like, yes, yeah, he will get back. He's available. Yeah, I, get it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I shouldn't even say that. <laughs> I know, you're screwed now. Matt talked myself. to Nikki for like two years thinking it was me. Yeah. Totally. Yes. Yeah. Did. Yes. And it's funny <laughs> too. <laughs> 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 yeah. And the whole time I had Josh's real number. Yeah. <laughs> well, if anything, Josh was really fucking nice to me the whole time. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jeez. Good shit. Um, okay, so uh, so we, we finally tell, yeah. decided it was time for a complete change. Yeah. So we decided we made it through COVID. Mm -hmm. Time to sell the bar. Time to reassess everything. Mm. We yeah. always talked about wanting to van down by the river. You know, get an RV mm. and just be free and you get always talked about. We've, we've talked, talked about, about it for years. For years. Yeah. It's something that we were always, it's always interested in. We've, it's like we should just fucking so, do it. Mm. A premise to that is that we travel a lot. Like yeah. we, you like know, a lot, lot. we did the a convention lot, circuit. Lot. Like. Hard. Mm. I want to so say we have for clients all over the country. Mm. A already. solid mm. six years, yeah. we were traveling more than six months out of the year. Mm. Um, yeah, so it was. We were already used to like that, and mm -hmm. you know, at that point, we we had like a custom van that we had where we were able to drive mm -hmm. um, a lot of the places. But like since COVID, um, airlines, airlines, suck. and hotels. Well, hotels just suck. a lot of mm. those Rental industries cars. are hit mm. are hit hard. They don't have the staffing or the training. And um, so every time the last couple, I'd say the last year, yeah. we've traveled every single time there's something that happens. Mm -hmm. And I know it's like such a like whiny thing to talk about because it's like, of course, I'm so fortunate that we can travel, that sure. we can afford to do that, that we can, you know, like make time to do that. Mm -hmm. And I know that there's a lot of people that can't. So I feel bad even bitching about it, but mm -hmm. like, it's fucking awful. Yeah. you know. <laughs> and like, I'll be in a Chicago airport at midnight and they're like, sorry, you're not going anywhere and mm -hmm. you don't get a hotel. And like, mm, right. they just don't care anymore. And mm -hmm. How do I'm we just, cut all that I'm out? I'm too old you know, for this like, shit so, now <laughs> that mm. I'm like, I really need a comfortable bed to sleep in. Let's so, finally get that RV. We don't have yeah. to deal with fucking airports. We don't have to deal with hotels. We don't have to deal with rental cars. Mm -hmm. We have everything with us. You mm -hmm. know, let's just finally bite the bullet and do it. And did, did you guys sell your home? Yeah. We got rid of our house. Everything. We sold the bar. We sold I most gave of our personal my belongings. Car to Justice, our son. Mm -hmm. And yeah, sold most we of our belongings in our house. Put some shit in storage. Yeah. Bought the 
bought the RV. I fucking love that. Yeah. No more bills. We bought the RV, paid it off. And the RV is super nice. No payment. Yeah. We're pulling our Jeep behind it, Jeez. which is paid. Yeah. So no car we literally payment, no were RV like, payment. We want as few bills no as possible. No house, no bar, no bills, no nothing. So. Damn, yeah. See, to me, that awesome. was a smart move. Like, paying it off like that was just yeah. sm- I remember they were, Jamie would text me, and I'm like, you're making the best decision ever. Like, wow. yeah. not having that bill, right? Because look at gas prices. You know, Pete had to put, yeah. what, 400 bucks in your tank the other day yeah but, but shit, compared not to rent, 15 right. to 20,000 a mortgage. month in bills yeah, yeah right exactly. 400 gas bill that's nothing. shit yeah mm-hmm. that's a that's a nice dinner like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah man so. i love that i've been looking at getting a sprinter van because i just want to be able to fucking travel with me and megan and maybe yeah. our daughters or some of my homies and fucking ride bikes all around the country and yeah. stop and our tattoo good friend when cody i want cody hennings yeah. cody he one, just yeah. bought a brand new one and he's been he's going through the process yeah, yeah. He, he got the uh he the got the solar at evergreen, solars at evergreen. Yeah. 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 yep he yeah, cut the it's solar awesome too. Yeah. yeah he cut the windows into it himself and yeah he's working hard on it and it's yeah, just, more tattooers cool. should do this it's awesome so we could all kind of tour together like how bands like a big caravan why don't tattooers tour together like let's do collabos all over the fucking country well, together. it was cool yeah. because we, we did the houston villain art show right and then uh the next weekend was the indie expo and right. so we saw a couple people that had been at houston the weekend before and uh you know i was like did you fly here and they're like no i drove you know i drive mm-hmm. everywhere and it was like mm-hmm. oh so we you know we got to tell stories of like driving and just the stuff i mean you see some weird shit on the side of the road especially in the midwest <laughs> y'all got some weird stuff here there's <laughs> like <laughs> The giant Jesus statue. I was going to say, oh, oh yeah. The uh, giant Jesus like, yeah. standing well, on gold, like gold water. Jesus and, yeah. Well, no, because the one you're talking, that thing was, they call him Touchdown Jesus. Touchdown <laughs> Jesus, yeah. yeah. That one got, he got struck by lightning, set on fire, and it burnt to the fucking ground. Oh, but he was like, you saw, the wow. one you saw. Talk about knew. an act of God. <laughs> no, for real. He burnt that motherfucker down. The one He's you like, all saw is the like. new <laughs> one. His arms are down. His arms are down. Like that's oh my god, hilarious. <laughs> you know, it's like God Himself did that shit. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's always the indication that you're right by the fucking flea market. Right? Yes. Oh, it's yes. Like, oh, this is the flea that market. That was actually. right by the flea market. <laughs> that's like, right. <laughs> it was funny. We saw uh, what is it? Because people are like, so what are you gonna see? I'm like, I want to see all Everything. the ridiculous shit. I want to see like the world's biggest ball of yarn. I'm pretty sure yeah. it was like a biggest rocking chair mm. somewhere. Yeah, and so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we want to stop Indiana somewhere. I'm sure yeah. it is. Yeah. <laughs> 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 to stop and see I'm all so of stuff. Curious, what's it like? Like, so let's say Pete's driving. Yeah. I mean, I saw. Uh, let's you just guys for, have like a beautiful. For the record, like a, she hasn't driven I haven't yet. Driven yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? So Pete's he, always driving. <laughs> he, he loves it. She's put that on he, the side. Pete's driving. Yes. <laughs> but sorry, so go ahead. Back, if you're back in your bedroom, because you have like a full size bedroom, I saw. We it. have like one and a half bathrooms we have a, Man, we have a tub crazy. and a washer and dryer what's, yeah. it, what's it like are, are, are like are you back there able to sleep are you like nervous about a, like, a, like crashing or like so it's a bit it's a bit of both to be honest yeah. um he's gotten better with driving um he definitely so there was there was a turn in st louis <laughs> that i didn't see it was I not see good the sign. and so the turn like because you're towing a jeep also we're towing a jeep yes. yeah. so like but it's it's the, the thing is like 40 feet long, so it's yeah. huge. Yeah. So yeah, he took this turn going way too fast and like literally everything, everything on <laughs> oh, the shit. right half of our RV mm-hmm. went over to the left side, mm-hmm. which included. So one of the things that we took from the bar, there's a there's a cherry company called Luxardo, like an Italian and they're dark cherry. They're so they're delicious. They're the best cherries on the planet. So we took planet. this jar. Mm. <laughs> it's a. It looks like a coffee can, mm. but it's full of cherries. It's like a hundred dollars for this like jar of cherries. Syrup. Very that it's in, Like a sugary mm. syrup. That went all over the RV, oh, and he's driving God. in downtown St. Louis, and I'm like, I can't just pull over. <laughs> right, right. I'm like freaking out because it looks like blood. Yeah. Right. And there's dogs. You know, our dogs are like don't know what to do, and like. It just you, you just don't even know like how much shit's not tacked down in an yeah. RV until that situation yeah. happens. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that was a shit show. But we got through it. Um, and there have been times where like I had a headache. And so I went and laid in the bed. But I, it was funny because I dreamt about being in the RV. I dreamt that I was driving, but I had to go do something. So I left the steering wheel <laughs> and like went and did something. And then I was like, oh, shit. And I ran back up to the steering wheel and like got in a position. And I've 
like I said, not even driven the thing. So wow. I think my brain knew like that you're because it's it's very mm-hmm. move. Mm-hmm. Movement full, I guess would yeah. be the word. Yeah. Well, you guys earlier said it's like an earthquake. It, yeah. 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 So like, yeah. So every time little, you drive your RV, as much as it shakes going from one destination to another, they say it's equivalent to putting your house through, through an, an earthquake. earthquake. Every time, because wow. so everything's like, shaking. The whole so ride or time. just getting started? Or? I mean, depends it, on the roads. Some yeah. roads yeah. are fucking awesome Some and yeah. super smooth. Terrible. Yeah. Texas roads yeah. suck. Mm. Um, mm. Huge potholes. Yeah. And like a pothole for a car sucks. Yeah. A pothole for your house, man, yeah. really sucks. Yeah. It rattles everything. So, but I mean, when if I'm sitting up front, it's it's a pretty nice ride. I mean, it's like a full on leather cushy. Rec- I, my seat reclines like it actually yeah. has a little recliner. But I only drive during the day. Mm. I don't drive at night, mm. and we try and limit our driving from eight to six hours in between. Mm. But yeah, so no more than eight, eight hours. Six yes. hours. That's yeah. it. We drive. We stop. That's where it is. We either go to an RV park or we pull over to the side and. This mm. is where we're staying tonight. Mm. Yeah. So when you go to an RV park, do you get things like water? Like, like do they have some amenities yeah, they have there? Hookups. Worse. Full yeah, hookups. electricity, water, and sometimes a sewage dump. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Mm. yeah so we'll get awesome. usually the cheapest we paid is seventeen. The most we paid night, is like yeah. sixty. And it just depends right. on where you're it's at. It's still really $17. affordable. Seventeen dollars for the night. Damn. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay. Even yeah. sixty is amazing. Yeah. yeah, right. Well, the and, indie convention, we parked in the back of the convention. We talked to the hotel. Yeah. They're like, yeah, just pull around back and you guys can stay there. We just ran our generator, stayed there for free, so had- ate breakfast at the hotel, yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. paid for parking, <laughs> to nice. use the restrooms, ate yeah. it, you know, and mm-hmm. yeah, just stayed in the back for free. Man. For the whole so you're getting people that are like, Go oh, hook me up in the RV. Tattoo yeah, dude, we, we partied in the RV afterwards. <laughs> oh, yeah. getting tattooed in the RV? Oh, ta- no, I don't think yeah. No, I mean, I don't think of course. Be, I mean, it, it's like you, you don't really have to do that. You know? We want the ability to like, if we meet somebody really cool in a national park somewhere, like yeah. some sure. dude almost falls off a cliff and we save his life. <laughs> you know, we tattoo like, a fucking cliff. right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like just you know, across with how much we've traveled, we've ran into some really amazing people. Yes. And so, like, there have been those opportunities where those people are like, "Oh, I wish I, I don't have a tattoo, and I would totally get tattooed by you." Mm-hmm. And like, we've not ever had the opportunity to do that. Not so yet, I'm like, yeah. not that we would want to tattoo in the RV, but yeah. like mm-hmm. the option. Yeah. You know, all of our stuff is so, all wired. And yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's, so, Jamie, it's like the equivalent of tattooing in a hotel room. That's like, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember, Jamie, how when I was a kid, I wanted to be a photographer and I had the dark room and everything? Yeah. So I've recently gotten really back into that and I've been buying film cameras, which is crazy because my daughter is like, doesn't even want to show her film. She's like, I don't even know what that is. Yeah. Mm. But, uh, you guys should consider that and like just start documenting. I mean, I know your phone can do it, but there's something about that film camera. Yeah. Uh, you can send me the negatives. I can develop them for you. Mm. I think it'd be really cool if you just started documenting. I can see a book, right? Yeah. So like that was definitely the intention when we first uh, set out for this. You know, of course, we had this whole like unicorns and rainbows type thing in our we head. Have, we have drones. We have uh, GoPros. It's yeah. just we haven't gotten to the point to where we can really well, start to do that. Yeah, so it was like, like we're gonna yeah. film everything. So much everything. happened with the RV and sure, yeah. working so much right now just to get back up on our feet again. Yeah. That like now we can start to focus on it. We have three weeks off till the Denver show. Yeah. Mm. We can kind of start working on stuff like that. So what do so you do during that? So like, so, so you have three weeks off. Do you just say, "Hey, we're gonna go chill at a friend's house"? Or what do you? What are your plans for? So I mean, we're, off like that? we're currently in Ohio, and yeah. we're going to make our way. You know, we have almost three weeks to get to Denver, and I we really hustled and busted our ass in Houston and Indy and a guest spot in Indy afterwards. So right. I'm ready to like take a break from tattooing. Yeah, for a we're not bit. gonna tattoo until we get to Denver. So we okay. wanted like that's where we want to do all the hiking, and we want to do like hot springs and kayaking and rock climbing, all of that stuff that you know we love to be outdoors and mm. yeah jamie and pete um, have been huge outdoors people like they're always yeah. jogging and running and they look you know they well, love not it. anymore i've been eating lately <laughs> <laughs> but no we really we want to get back yeah, on I totally that want to get know? back on track sure. with that but yeah so but i you love know, the just, idea that you could decide you could just be like well we're off for three weeks but i'm kind of bored and you could literally just like in your town in some random town mm-hmm. guest spot boom totally right? yeah Right. Yeah. If yeah. you feel like it, that's 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 that's, that's, that's it's so free. Like, absolutely. I dream. I fantasize about getting through this chemotherapy. You know, we had a dinner together before you guys launched all of this, and like, I'm so inspired by you guys. Like, I want to do it so. And so does Nikki. 
Mm. So like, we're going to learn from you, what you guys have and yeah. we're going to do it too. Don't plug into the Don't wrong plug into source. a house outlet. Yes. <laughs> What's that? Call me. Oh, you really? called me about that. That's what we did. Shit. That that was our first fuck up. We were in Texas and we hooked up our uh, plug in because our, we thought our electricity would run through a, a house outlet. So right. it wasn't and it fried. And this was Cody's house, house, right? This is Cody's we, house. Cody's so it's house. a little more than that. It's not a house we outlet. You, Cody. Like Co- Cody has a giant house on yeah. like lots of land, and he has like a workshop that would make any man jealous. And he would work every man's tool man's possible. Yeah. Beautiful. And so mm-hmm. I'm He's got like skate ramps. He's got the guys from Nitro Circus. Like yeah, BMX. So it's not like a there. normal like, house, yeah. you know. And he's like, oh yeah, I've got this like this you know, 220 plug in or whatever. And I'm like, okay, I had a 220 plug thing for our hot tub. So yeah. maybe it's the same thing. And so we look and we find on Amazon an adapter that would work. And so we're like, okay, if they make an adapter for it, like Might we didn't, well work. didn't even work? think for a second. And absolutely I would have done not. it for sure. I would have done um, it too. Yeah. It, it delivered twice as much electricity as we were allowed. Almost three times. And so the adapter itself the, did? The, no, just the, just oh, the adapter okay. didn't okay. have a, a neutral That's, leg when yeah. it should mm. have. Mm. And so it fried everything that was plugged in. So that was like one of our two air conditioners, our entire inverter, our refrigerator. Um, Outlets. Yeah, mm. all, like half of the outlets on the RV. So it was mm. a very like expensive mistake. Three weeks in, like a seventy. Three weeks into this entire up. journey. <laughs> well, what the fuck Cody do yeah. about that? Right? <laughs> he let us sleep yeah. in his house and he let yeah. our dogs run around his okay. yard. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, but I mean, it happened in the most ideal of situations. It was a perfect situation. We were at his house. We were at a friend's house. We weren't oh, in God. the middle of the road somewhere, yeah. like broken down with our dogs. We were at a friend's place. We mm-hmm. had the money to I was able it. to do a guest spot at Billy Jack's shop. Artistic yeah. encounters. Uh, yeah, yeah. deep yeah. Ellum, So yeah, he huge really, shout out cool. to Billy Jack. He really, yeah, he, they really took he care really of us. Took care just of our us. community just cool. came together and was like, we got this. You mm-hmm. know, like we had people help us financially mm-hmm. when we didn't even really ask for it. We were right. asking for work just to kind of get back our yeah. nest egg a little bit more. But yeah. it was a scary hit, you know, and I was like, are we are, should we be doing this? Yeah, like, like yeah. We just this is serious. This is mistake. this mm. is our house. Like we could have burnt it down. Yeah. Like realistically, we could have it could have gotten everything. that bad. Yeah. And how, was it instant or do you have plugged? It, no, it was like, after a while. I can't it, was, see it. it was a few oh. hours that it went through, right? OK, because I wasn't there. I was working when that happened. Yeah. yeah, you and Cody were working on it. You guys had plugged it in and then you were like, I just heard some weird sounds going. By, by the mm. refrigerator. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So it was. So. My God. <laughs> yeah, so it was, it was it was a crazy experience. Yeah. So like we thought we were going to have some leisurely time to kind of like be able to break into this. And it yeah. was like, oh, shit, we fucked up real bad. Now we need to like hustle and yeah. make mm. some more money because, you know, this is literally our everything. Yeah. Everything that is important to us yeah. that we have like within <laughs> like is on that RV. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. yeah, so I'm like, if we if we mess this up, you know, of course, there's insurance, whatever, but that's not it's not the same. So it, it definitely made us think about things for a bit. Um, but, you know, coming out of that, you know, we made really great. Um, we were able to work the Houston show. We weren't scheduled to work that show. Right. Mm. We were able to work that show. We Met made great awesome connections. Great we did connections. great tattoos there. It's yeah. a big show. It was yeah. a really big show. Mm-hmm. And we we ended up, um, so <laughs> I don't know if you guys have seen it all. We've been like a little bit talking about this thing called Keep the Fees. Um, a good friend of him that, that Pete grew up with, Adam Facenda, second generation tattooer, owns a couple shops in Florida and uh, True love tattoo. Yep. He teamed up with this guy, Peter, and um, they're basically it's Keith the fees is like a credit card processing thing, but it's it's tailored towards tattoo artists, barbers and salons only. Mm. So it's cool because the team knows the challenges that we face, knows what we're looking for. So it's not just credit card. It does like online scheduling. It keeps uh, track of your clients. It keeps all of your yeah, Mm. your inventory. It can like remind you about inventory. It's just it's really well tailored for the tattoo community so Mm. we were able to hop in their booth they invited us we're like we'd love to have you guys on board we made great connections with them and they were like we love you and we're like we love you and so we picked up the denver show we're working on their booth in the denver show we're pretty much part like uh Mm. how would you say like a joint venture, uh, kind like of an thing? ambassador type ambassador. thing okay. for it. It's just, you know, great. Great. We Sorry. just talk about it and tell yeah. people about it because it's helpful. You know, it's saving well, yeah. it's saving tattooers a lot of money and a, a lot, lot of hassle. Of yeah. And it's called keep the keep fees. The fees. Keep the yeah, well, you yeah, guys just told mine, a lot of like, people. Yeah, <laughs> Adam's shop, like he did 
what, what did it's he 47, say? It's like 47,000 in credit card fees in credit last card year. Fees he saved wow. yeah. just in one year. Like that's mm. not a that's not a, it's right. not a small that's number. Not a small number. Like right. 47 grand, that's yeah. that's a lot of shit you could put into your tattoo shop for yeah. renovations or just mm. in your pocket. So yeah, if you could save that just on credit card fees, mm. you'd be an idiot not to. So yeah, Love linking it. up with so. them was really cool. So we were like, well, as shitty as the situation was, good yeah. things came out of it. And a lot so. of it was because of your comment. Yeah. Because of well, what? The comment that well, you was put on because of that? Because you were like, what's the, I said, a hard lesson learned today. You know, I made a Facebook post and you were like, well, what was the lesson? Mm. And I was like, what do you mean what's the fucking lesson? I almost burnt my house down. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. In the yeah. moment, in the yeah. moment, yeah. I was yeah. like. She was like, is Matt fucking serious? Yeah. Yeah. Did you say something to Josh? Like, was he being a dick? No, yeah. but I used, to, when jo I used to say, I would talk that way to Josh. I yeah. still do. But early yeah. on, he was like, this motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. I know, I was like. like, was like was that, are you being a sarcastic <laughs> prick? Yeah. yeah, I was like. What's the lesson? Yeah. I'm a fucking idiot. And, you know, like, I cost myself a shit ton of money right now. You know, CT people think I'm an asshole. To like, yeah, it's, it's funny to see how similar we are. Yeah, because I was like, I think yeah. you called me about it, and I'm like, I'm always defending Matt about something. Yeah. <laughs> he means well. No, and I knew that, and like, it was funny because after the Houston convention, I was like, that motherfucker was right, you know. And I was like, but it did. It made me think of it, you know, because I know that you're always looking for the good in things and like learn, look in the lesson, look in the positivity yeah. and you know it's inspiring to have that around so thank you in the yeah. moment maybe a little I was a little <laughs> snarky towards you but I appreciate it you, you either win or you learn that's right yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. and both are valuable yeah. yes yeah. Yeah. Yes, my God, it's so good. Thank you for sharing that. Because <laughs> people think that shit all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it don't, I don't always get it. to hear it. Yeah. It's a gift to hear yeah. it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm good at doing that. And I don't even need to. <laughs> you know? I remember when, uh, when we were first doing the podcast and Hip wasn't, Hip was using the restroom or something, so it was just me and Matt. And I barely knew Matt at all. And he's like... uh I just wanted to talk to you. He's like, I know I might come off as a little intimidating sometimes. And, you know, we've grown up around, like, actual killers. Yeah. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah, you're, you're pretty yep. intimidating. There. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I watched a guy get stuffed in a barrel. So scary ago, with you know? those dreads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I understand where he's coming from. It's a, it's a different yeah. level, yeah. you know. Yeah. But uh, so I remember, yeah, I remember sharing that with Nikki. What's something I said to you uh, in the past where you were like almost pissed about it, but then, um, you know, I forget. It was you probably something similar to what Jamie said. I think yeah. there was. Like there was something some serious kind of going lesson. on. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. it was a lot going on. And I'm like, well, what'd you learn? And I'm like, I learned I fucking have cancer or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Insensitive prick, man. Yeah. <laughs> Oh shit! That's awesome. So, yeah, how long have you guys been on the road now? Like six, six weeks. weeks. We plan this is new. This is yeah, new. We plan yeah. on doing two yeah. years. Yeah. Wow. This fresh, next three fresh weeks. Fresh out the gate. <laughs> this next three weeks will be like the first real relax time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I have a cello that he bought me for Christmas. Like not this last one, but the one before that, and I've barely played it. So I'm really looking forward to like. Nice. Like an upright like base? a real it's oh, in yeah, the bathtub of my RV nice. right now. So it, <laughs> it was on one side of the RV, but now it's on the other side. Yeah. 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 Man. So oh my goodness. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I've I've been learning ambidextrous stuff. I've been trying to do everything left handed, so just really new, new shit, yeah. I've, uh, I, could, I could shave my whole face left-handed. Mm. I, I picked up chopsticks really quick left-handed. Um, and yeah, just because what made you want to do that? Just to keep the brain fresh. Like I, on, I'm not man. watching TV. <laughs> it's like, what am I going to do while I'm on the road? Let's try mm. and learn to do everything with your left hand. Why man. not? Yeah. So, at, like for the past year, maybe year and a half, I've been secretly tattooing people every once in a while. Mm -hmm. I'll switch <laughs> and I'll kind of shade some shit. And then he'll look over at me, me and I'm all like, like, oh. You, you see, not this hand. <laughs> 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 and uh, a couple of my charcoal drawings, I'll switch over hands. And But yeah, I'm really, like now is like really like, I'm trying to really put this one behind. And, mm -hmm. yeah, it'd be cool to just be That's at a awesome. tattoo convention and be like, Two machines. So here's yeah. a funny thing, Joshua. I know you. You told me you're that that like we should record everything. And so um, when we were doing some renovation, well, when I so when he was tattooing at Billy Jack's, I was at Cody's house like working on the RV um, before it 
blew up basically. <laughs> and so uh, I'm like happily painting. Like we mm -hmm. wanted to change our cabinets cause it, you know, all RVs look the same inside. So we pulled down all the cabinets in the kitchen and like sanded them down and painted them and put them back up. And so like, I just set my phone up to record and um, I totally fell off the counter. I was, <laughs> I was alone, like no oh, one was like, my dogs were there, <laughs> but I like had sat up on the kitchen counter, was like painting this really difficult spot and like 90s hip hop was on. So I was kind of like in the groove yeah. and I like reached up and I like completely <laughs> fell backwards off and I made it. Caught like, it on film? I, st I absolutely have it on film. <laughs> awesome. I, I, I like did it and I caught myself and then I like laughed and then I looked at the camera and I was like, oh, and then I just, I just went on. And I do still have it. Uh, I'm at some point. I have recorded a lot of stuff. We just good, I'm good. like wanting to put it together. Oh yeah. yeah. What song was yeah. playing? Do you remember? I want to say it was Biggie. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That would make you fall off the counter. It was. Yeah. It was so hilarious. <laughs> so for you know, hip for being like a younger tattooer, one of the cool things that this is making happen is this is a lot of like the history of tattooing. This is you know, kind of like roaming around and doing your own thing and making your own, cutting your own path. So yeah. I, I, I don't know, I'm super excited about, I hope more tattooers do stuff like this. It sounds like hip, you're, you're kind of looking to it yourself maybe someday. Absolutely, I've always kind of been nomadic in spirit. You yeah. know? Right. Um, yeah. Take me with you, man. Let's go. Yeah, like the world, ch like the the Dude, championships tour. you threw mm -hmm. in Vegas, which yes. is where I, where I met you for the first time. Right? Actually, no, no. We were talking about it. First time oh. I met you was at a Massachusetts show because you were Sturbridge. Sturbridge. You were there. Yeah, yeah. we met. Because, yeah, we did. Because wow. I was talking. I was four years into tattooing, yeah. almost five. Yeah, and you were. Uh, I think under five as well. Oh, you had to be. And yeah. I was looking to do a book called Five Year Plan, and oh. I wanted to do it about all tattooers who've been tattooing under five that years. That was you? And yeah. yeah, and that was me. And I wanted to do that book. It just ended up not happening. Okay. But yeah, that's the first time I remember. I was remember. We I was were like, talking about it, yeah. Like the first time I met Matt, I think was in Sturbridge at, jo at Joey Zaza's show. Yes. Yeah. I'm so glad you remembered that yeah. and brought it up, yeah, man. You Joshua tattooed Jamie at that show. Yeah. 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 That was yes, a great show. One. Yeah. 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 It was and a great I think show. that I year it. he was awarded by Tattoo Society Artist of the Year magazine that year, I think. Or that, that was crazy. Yeah. yeah. That blew my mind, man. I was tattooing and I heard him call me because that, yeah. that magazine was so awesome. Remember Tattoo mm -hmm. yeah. Society? Yeah. It was such mm -hmm. a prestigious magazine. And yeah. to get the Tattoo Artist of the Year, they made this yeah. incredible trophy for me. Mm -hmm. That was fucking awesome. I actually did a. Co so me and Kyle Cotterman both had seminars. Yeah, and we were like, "Fuck it, let's just do them together." Mm. And uh, we so we did it. We did them together, which was awesome. Mm. Yeah, that was cool actually the first dude. seminars I ever saw. Was yeah. was that? Yeah, I forgot yeah. all about that. And well, that was a great idea when you and I felt honored that you approached me to include me in that book. Yeah, I didn't know if you we, were going to remember that or not. <laughs> well, you know what? I wouldn't have until you brought it up. And I was like, yeah, because I felt honored because I was a newbie. Yeah. yeah. Anyone that you perceived was killing it and under the five-year That's year what mark, I was, the, yeah, five-year yeah. plan about all tattooers that were just doing Dude, cool shit. Well, yeah, that's the cool great. thing about traveling as well is like, there's some killer tattoo artists out there that don't hit the circuit. So right. like there's people out there, there's kids out there yeah. tattooing yeah. that are hitting it so hard and, and like people just don't even know because right. they're just in their own little bubble just yeah. killing it. Yeah. And like yeah, it's ridiculous. You know, Joshua's always been wanting to like look for that person that, you know, has it and like, you know, that's something that he's always been really inspired about. So of course that's passed down onto me is like mm -hmm. I'm always keeping an eye out on like someone who just has it and like mm -hmm. you can just tell that they have it. Even yeah, if it's, it's so even so, if it's so well awesome before they that, have yeah. it, but you, you can tell like there's a different quality in some people. And so yeah. being able to travel and like talk to people and tell our experience and our stories and stuff and inspire some people or get inspiration from others as well, you know, just keeping it well rounded across the board. Yeah. But I when totally you were, cut you off about the, the Evergreen Championship. Oh, that's so. okay. Well, what he was talking about hit being nomadic. And when we all met in Vegas for the World Championships, yeah. right. we're both leaving Ohio. I flew, this man drove. When this man drives, talk about being nomadic and loving to travel. He don't even take the fucking highway. He back roads all the way. The whole like, way, He's dude. on his way to Vegas. Yeah. He's like, might as well hit Philly on the way. <laughs> did, you, did you go to Area 51? Uh, yeah, twice now, yeah. I've I think drove, you were telling me like a drone popped up or something and you were like in some weird area. That was in Boise, me and Boston Nick 
and <laughs> Boston, Boston, Boston. <laughs> <laughs> you're fucking retarded. <laughs> so, we I we went. Gets thicker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, he he kept he kept fucking telling me there's there's no fucking desert in Boise, and I'm like motherfucker. And so we went out to to a desert, and it said like. Uh, United States Army things may fall from the sky and I'm like whatever that's just some bullshit so like halfway through out of nowhere over this hill comes a fucking like army drone and I'm like let's turn around yeah. Yeah. especially if you're with Boston Dick yeah. like, it's, not, it's not gonna end well but yeah when Matt's talking about I actually it was my first time ever riding that far you know I had my suspend or my license suspended for 14 years so like to get them back like I'll drive the fucking bearing straight to Russia if, if motherfuckers want to chip in on gas I don't care I'll drive right. around the world yeah. and I actually I never stopped by but I remembered you guys lived in Prescott and we went through Arizona and Flagstaff yeah. and shit and I had reached out I know we, we weren't, we weren't, we weren't we there weren't yeah. <laughs> so. I actually we hit Prescott early in the morning and there was like a big fucking elk or something I was trying to feed Cheetos to <laughs> it was like right on the side of the road <laughs> I, I fucking you know how you're talking about seeing all the weird crazy shit and I was going to ask ask you guys if you ever like do you take interstates or do you just fucking go like where there's no pavement like i'll take so, dirt roads and so shit. with our rv <laughs> since it's so big we have to like yeah however with, with, with towing but like <laughs> i was like this is funny can i tell this story go ahead so like <laughs> the first so we leave arizona right and we're like all right man we're ready for this we're headed towards texas i'm like you know New Mexico, there's some cool stuff. So I'm like looking in all these groups for cool shit. And I hear this place called Bisti Badlands. It, it's B-I-S-T-I, but it is pronounced Bisti. Um, it's like an hour off the interstate and it has these crazy mushroom it, looking it looks rock like Dr. Seuss. Mm. Like if, if Dr. Seuss <laughs> but built natural. a real place, yeah, oh yeah, but they're yeah. natural. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. And so I'm like, I really want to check this out. And so it's not very far off our route. And he's like, yeah, no problem. <laughs> and so uh, we start going and of course the road like the second we get off the interstate is just terrible mm. um, and then and I'm driving and, mm -hmm. and, and this is like the first couple times he's driving mm. um, and then a sandstorm hits and I'm like serious sandstorm like you can't see two car lengths in front of you wow um, for an hour mm. <laughs> and so do and windshield pulling... wipers even do anything no no, yeah. no. and we're pulling my jeep it actually behind. made it worse really <laughs> yeah wow. so my poor jeep like yeah it, and I, it still has sand in it from there but yeah yeah go on so um <laughs> i start that's when i had my headache and i was mm. like i'm gonna go lay down so i went and laid down i'm like let me know when we're getting close well uh he doesn't tell me until we're like two minutes away and what i what i didn't realize was that he passed multiple signs that mm. were like Bisti Badlands, Wildlife Reserve, turn here, parking lot here. But, then, yes, but yes, I'm following the GPS that she put in. Uh, 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 <laughs> so like, he doesn't question. I'm worried about sand and like right. my Jeep flying off right. the hitch. I'm not looking for fucking signs. I'm following yeah. the GPS and right. making sure we don't die. So right. he's like, we're two minutes away. I'm like, okay, I get out of bed. I come up to the front. And like literally our GPS tells us like you've arrived and it's a dirt road and it says and like ironically a church it's, it's like a church, church and it's an arrow <laughs> and I'm like and he's like what's happening I'm like just go down the road so we go down this road and it's really sketchy it's sketchy as fuck and then we get to the middle of nowhere and it's but it's kind of an open area so we're like this has got to be the parking lot so we're like mm. only okay. people out there yeah. Mm. Uh, so we get, you know, the dogs are excited. We get our hiking stuff together. We get our little camel back and we get out there. And I'm like, I feel like that's the direction because there's some rocks off in the distance. And so mm. we just start walking. We did not see another living creature for like two hours. Including we animals, there. like no, reptiles, no birds. like nothing. Wow. And, nothing. But, it, but wow. we saw these crazy, like. The weather was perfect. Yeah. And, and like the sandstorm ended. We yeah. parked. Yeah. Every, everything started was fine. Yeah. And then it was quiet it was just silent beautiful. it was literally like being mm. on a different like planet a, it there was seriously no... felt like we were like transported to another planet yeah. like and we were the only people on this planet daytime like daytime, daytime. Yeah. yeah yeah we've got some really beautiful pictures we'll show you but wow. uh it was it was cool it was a really really cool experience for how stressful the day was mm. yeah uh it was it turned out really awesome and then so like we finish up we get back in the rv we like turn around get back on the road and then that's when we see all the signs and i'm like 
She's like, you Did you not these see any of these? And he's like, I don't remember those signs. <laughs> but it was right. like, that was absolutely where we should have gone. Right. We went somewhere totally different. Wow. Like we still saw some of the same stuff, but not like the tourist mm-hmm. part of it. So like we did get the off the road, off the beaten yeah. path right. part of this thing. But not on purpose. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, what, what, but, was, what was the but, lesson? But it was, <laughs> the lesson was absolutely always take a nap while he's Boys driving. And just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, yeah, we want to take some of those roads. But it's kind of scary because the RV's 40 foot. So, yeah, like, it's not like we can turn around. Yeah, RV stuck, like, mm-hmm. getting that thing stuck. Oh, man. That would be We can't turn no, around. Yeah. You know? Because you ain't got reception out there the either. Parking. No reception. He's amazing at it. And it's like, how do you yeah. I don't understand. How, how do you good. prepare to be an RV owner? Like right. the first time you drove one was when you bought one, or did you? I pulled practice? off the lot driving it for the first time. First time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How, how many practice and shit? How many? No. How many miles was on it? Sixty-five thousand miles. Really? That's yeah. it. How, how good are they? How how long can you Apparently, drive? Apparently, with this engine, my nephew is a diesel mechanic. The engine and the transmission that it is wouldn't have any problem with it as long as we take care of it. Yeah. Starting up to five hundred thousand. Holy Ooh. shit! Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Like so as realistically, long as we do regular maintenance on it, yeah. those engines are known to go from five hundred thousand to a million miles. No problem. So there's they your book title right there: five hundred thousand miles. Yeah. <laughs> there's your book title. Yeah. It's a great. Song. I'm always so, thinking of that shit. Yeah. I win. Yeah, realistically, they've said that it's just starting to get broken into. Yeah. So, Man. yeah, that was that was the important thing was finding a strong uh, engine. Strong bones. Yeah. Everything else is cosmetic, which we're redoing floors mm-hmm. and, like she said, cabinets mm-hmm. and shit mm-hmm. like that. But as long as we had an engine with solid bones, we were stoked. Is it one of those when you park, then like it extends out on the sides and you now oh. have two new rooms? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. So I've our, had New York apartments that are smaller than this fucking <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Man. yeah, our living room has two slide outs on either side. So, yeah, yeah. it's like a normal size living room mm. for like a lot. Of, That's we so definitely cool. have had houses that have had smaller living rooms. And then our bedroom wow. also slides out as well. Yeah. Um, so and then we've got like uh, there's a tub. two two toilets, uh, a shower, a bathtub, washer dryer, and a washer dryer. Wow, a, a closet like you there's like you walk up to a closet that has like little mirror sliding mm-hmm. doors on it. Mm-hmm. Everything's super cute about it. So fun. And yeah. for our listeners, they also have two dogs. Yes. Oh yes. Yeah, right. a husky and a like a border collie mix. Where are they oh, at right yeah. now? They're, They're in the RV. The RV. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, yeah. we took them for a hike, got them tired before we did this. So, yeah, yeah took them on a the, long hike. We have the AC running. We leave classical music on the yeah, radio for them. So. Aww, Probably Wagner awesome. right now. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Yeah. yeah, don't play no biggie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, damn. Hell yeah. That's yeah, awesome. they, they got nice new fresh bones with marrow Yeah, they got it treats and, and stuff. And yeah. yeah, they're a little spoiled. So good. Yeah. So good. That's a family affair right there. Man, that just sounds like a fucking dream. Man. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. do that. That's everybody I'm so, so that. jealous. I'm so Everybody's jealous. Everybody's like, that's just the dream. That's his dream. Like, it's not a dream, man. Yeah. It's reality. You can fucking do it. Right. Yeah. That, yeah. Like, the whole time, it's it was exciting and scary. Like, it's mm-hmm. seriously 50 50. But, mm-hmm. like, once tattooing. You take that plunge. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking yeah! It's well, it's so cute great. because like our twenty-year-old Justice, um, he lives in Oklahoma. Um, he moved there, gosh, a little over a year ago now to yeah. live on his own and has an apartment with friends and stuff. And how old is he? He's twenty. Okay. So, um, you know, I was just talking to him the other day. Uh, talking to him about the Houston convention and yeah. like he saw the booth that we were in for keep the fees and like they went all out like it looked like an Apple store mm. <laughs> it was like white leather furniture with, like, like glass it. tables set up like it. and then we were you know they had like a quadruple booth and we're all tattooing off to the side in this super bougie booth so I'm telling Justice our son about it and like he goes so you're like an influencer and I was like I guess if that's the word for it I'm, I'm not really like mm-hmm. you know hip definitely to that. you are right. <laughs> yeah. but um, and I love it that you're like I guess I, I guess I was like I guess yeah. so yep. and so that, he was like that's the so language cool that, that they speak you know what I mean that's the yeah. language that they speak yeah so. right that's exactly like I'll talk to my kids about like a movie star they're way more interested in a TikTok star yeah mm. you know? yeah, yeah so, totally so like uh, Facebook recently reached out to me to have me like promote this camera bag and they'll pay me and stuff and i yeah. actually have to ask my son like mm-hmm. my 13 year old son like hey is this a good brand deal yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. should i ask know, for more you know <laughs> yeah right, exactly yeah so justice was like super he was like into that and was like that's so cool and, and then he said to me he's like i'm so happy 
that you guys are free to do this. And I was like, what do you mean free? And he was like, you guys have been able to do this uh, lifestyle for a long time. But and take care of but, us. But he's like, I know that you, um, what was the word? He was like, I know that you sacrificed a lot to like make a home for us kids and take care of us. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm like, of course. Right. And he was like, but it's so cool to see you guys like doing this now and off on this journey. And he was like, you guys are meant to do this. And it was just, yeah. it was so cool. Well, I to took hear it, like your kids say that to yeah. me about it. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So awesome. many people, so many people talk the dream. Jamie yeah. and Pete have always been risk takers, like everything they've done. Cause mm -hmm. they didn't just sell a house. They sold a house that was one incredibly beautiful and was like an Airbnb. They have these things where you fly in, get tattooed, stay at the house, like a yeah. hot tub, ridiculous. They turned everything into an opportunity. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you like would, a power couple. Yeah. You know what I mean? You'd come and stay so, in the home and we would cook for you. Yeah, like, you'd get a would, menu yeah. for you, whether if you were vegetarian, <laughs> vegan, meat eater. You know, these are little things that they're not even mentioning, you know, but yeah, like right. it's, <laughs> you know, like I said, people talk the talk. Jamie and Pete fucking walk the walk. Yeah. And it's inspiring because it's like Pete said, like, it's not a dream. You can do it. So for our yeah. listeners out there, we, we yeah. always say this, like, whatever you're dreaming about, yeah. like, talk about it own it but start making plans get yeah. that it shit is. ready it is it's yeah. scary what are, what are as fuck your dreams? come on yeah. it's scary as fuck, what are your dreams dude, it's worth it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like you said because we say all the time if your dreams don't scare you they ain't big enough right right, right? exactly, yeah. exactly. that You're is so it. huge no. there were so and many Matt, moments i always love you i love that you always say don't be about it don't just be about it yeah all right don't just talk about it be yeah. about it be yeah. about it yeah. i love yeah. that yeah. Great example. Jamie and Pete are great examples. Mm. They're mm. they're fucking doing it. And you know what? It, it, they're going to be big, bad times and good times. And we, I went to dinner with them before they left on their journey. Yeah. And uh, I told them that, and they they knew. And I'm like, it's going to be terrible at times. And yeah. they're like, of course mm. it is. Mm. So they were prepared. Mm. Right. Mm. It's not some fucking dream. Like it's going to mm. be amazing. It's like right. crazy shit's going to happen. Yeah. And we were talking but earlier, my. It. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Josh. That it seems like, and again, it's only been six weeks, and we've been kind of following their. I've been kind of following their story. It seems like they've been met with challenges at every sure. town, yeah. every stop. Yeah. But yeah. on the flip side of that, there have been beautiful relationships, yeah. beautiful hikes. Always like, the connections you're go, making, yeah, watching the, the sunset on the roof of our RV, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, getting to see the fireworks, fireworks from yeah. Kings Island at night. Like, j there's just like these little moments that are so much more powerful than they, you know, I could just describe it all day long and it's like, oh yeah, that sounds nice. But yeah. like Living in that it. moment, it, it, it changes something in you and you can feel you that, understand that, that like, realness about it. You understand that pirate fucking mm. lifestyle. It's mm. just like, you have no attachments to anything, but Man. everything the in little, front of you. The little side. things matter more. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. like RV, RV life is difficult. Like yeah. it's not like you get to get, you know, art, everything, takes longer yeah. you know you, you you get stuff out to make breakfast you put it away the second you're done with it because you don't have a lot of room right. and so we are like pretty good now about yeah. making food and working around each other and stuff like that and yeah. it's it's cool to have that because yeah. it's a small space yeah but like the and the food's simple but the food is simple uh and hearty because like you have to when you park your rv then you have to like move everything make sure the space is clear so we can put the slides out and we have to walk the dogs and we have to like put all of our utensils out like yeah. it's it's more of a chore to do simple things sure. yeah right the food know, tastes so much that, better on top of a fucking rv at sunrise yes. totally <laughs> yes <laughs> even the most basic thing we made grilled cheese with chili mm. and it was seriously it was the, like the best, best grilled cheese and <laughs> chili like yeah. five, yeah. Like, five star fucking, restaurant in new york <laughs> it blew wolfgang yeah. away like mm -hmm. fuck that guy compared to this <laughs> rv right. fucking grilled cheese and chili well, yeah. we, just lost our, we just lost our wolfgang pucks right <laughs> But in a world where everybody's on TikTok and everything, Jamie and Pete are living. And I just, I don't know, it humbles me. They're yeah. living. And it's, people are, they're just not doing that today. Yeah. My God. You know? Yeah. And we so do want some of those memories on TikTok, TikTok or Instagram reels or whatever. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of people are excited for this. Yeah. They right. want to follow us and stuff. But it's important for us to really take the time to like, be in the moment and appreciate what we're yes, doing. Yes, yes. Not just do it to be able to film it and for those pictures, Come on. like yeah. really be there, be present. Yeah. Don't wait. Don't wait for yeah. some crazy shit like what happened to me to happen in your life. Yeah. To start living your life now. Yeah. So Absolutely. Good. Perfect example. Follow Jamie and Pete. 
I love yeah. you guys. Yeah. Love I'm you. so we excited you. for you. I'm, I'm jealous. <laughs> But well, we're like, going to be in Oregon to see too. you for a while. Yeah, we'll I see know. you next month. I can't it's wait. So I cannot good. wait. The shop is so beautiful. It's so huge now. <laughs> I'm so, so excited. Good. But uh, yeah. it, ins- it inspires me to not like, well, maybe someday. It's like, that's my yeah. new alarm. Now when that alarm goes off, it's like, you're going to travel in an RV. Yeah. Mm. I'm start putting that because I want it. And Nikki wants it. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah. our sister so. too, Jen, you know, she just had her 50th birthday. And so her yep. whole, one of her intentions was that she wanted to travel was it to 50 different places in the next yeah. 10 and, years? And, and, mm-hmm. Yeah, and for our listeners, my older sister has had agoraphobia for many years. Yeah. She she used to not be able to leave the house yeah, at all. Yeah, she can't so leave her house, huge, can't leave town. Huge step yeah. for her, yeah. Yeah, yeah so like so. even just going to stay at a hotel, like somewhere not in her own bed is mm-hmm. a huge like a thing. And she mm-hmm. actually yeah. just did that very recently. They got a little Airbnb mm-hmm. and, and were able to do that. And it's a huge step for her. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. But yeah. she has cited us as me and Joshua as inspiration for that. Mm. And so like that's a huge thing to be able to see. So, mm. you know, if we can inspire someone else to, to actually do it, then it's worth Speaking it. Speaking of little moments, yeah. before you know it, she'll be seeing sunsets upside down on yes. a roller yes. coaster <laughs> on shrooms. <laughs> <laughs> that was so fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right when I got here, we were out on my back deck, and like, yeah, we was at Kings Island, we was on shrooms, and we saw the sunset upside down on a roller coaster. Dude, it, it was, was epic. incredible. You know? Mushrooms <laughs> on roller coasters. Yeah, do it. Yeah, and they looked There's at each other like. There's got to be a like, disclaimer have... somewhere on the screen, please. Yeah, they said they looked at each other like, "Have you ever done this before?" And they're like, "No, no? you, no, yes." <laughs> So good. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> My God, like you always say, Hip, this ain't our practice life, right? right. And yeah. like I always say, in case that whole reincarnation thing don't quite work out, <laughs> this right. might be the only shot we got. Let's fucking get it. I personal yeah. th- personally you know? think that this is the only shot we got, Man. Which, was, which is why I live the way I live. Man, and somebody else yeah. said, even if it does, let's still fucking yeah, get it. Exactly. You know, either way. <laughs> yeah. You know? So good. Jeez, that it, you know, Josh is such a visionary, and a lot of times, Josh, I feel like flows in the prophetic. Like he'll call it, and uh, it happens. Often, you know, very often. Um, and 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 I dabble in that myself, Josh. I don't know about you, but this show, this episode alone, I feel is going to birth. You guys, I feel like, are giving other tattooers the permission, yeah, exactly, to even 100%. consider stepping into yeah. this. Like the, even what you broke down, like, hey, let's like rock, let's fucking tour together and tattoo yeah. and collab in different so cities. Awesome. I so think awesome. you guys just Our literally. Our friend Rodney Eckenberger just picked up an RV. He's yeah. in like South Bend and mm-hmm. we're like, come on, man, come on. And, yeah, you man. know, we're like slowly egging well, on other people We even people talked to, to Billy Jack. Us. Billy Jack was talking about meeting us at a convention somewhere, me tattooing him, him jumping in the RV, doing a little, just like a little stint with us. Because mm-hmm. Like driving with us to room, the next mm-hmm. city. Get to the next couple other towns. Mm-hmm or conventions do that together and then he'll fly home like man even do like a right? couple like exactly guest spot tours Come you know on, like, yeah. man <laughs> so would you have like a kind of like a couch or something like let's say let's say i wanted to come with you for somewhere yeah. There's room for like a couch type of thing. Yeah, like our a, living room couch pulls out into like a queen, queen size, size bed. bed yeah. Yeah. Oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, may, you may wake up to dogs. I was gonna say you, the but... dogs are gonna. And if you're a tattooer that's me. hungry and fucking wants it like hip, he'll sleep in the jeep. Yeah, on the way. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. For real. Yes. <laughs> yeah, pass out in our bathtub. Yeah. <laughs> Just go yeah. up on the roof. With the cello. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if the weather's nice, sleep on the roof. Yeah, dude, I appreciate this journey because like before I even knew that you were josh's sister or you were his brother-in-law you were getting tattooed uh your fucking nugget tattooed by cotterman yeah Yeah, and i just thought you were cool like talking to you briefly because like every every experience i've had with you guys it's like i haven't been able to like sit and really indulge and ask like fucking questions and just fucking kick it heavy as shit um it always seems like something happens work work mode right yeah and then, then the next when I found out you was Josh's sister, you were teaching at the at Evergreen uh, Educational, yeah, in yeah. Florida. And I actually still to this day have my Gmail set up the way you showed us how to Aww. set it up there, and it's <laughs> fucking awesome. magic. And I just reached out a couple weeks ago asking you like what card to get because uh, yeah. a big part of what you were teaching was like traveling. Yeah. Um, and I finally pulled the trigger and I got a card for an airline. But now, like listening to you talk about how airlines suck, I'm like, shit, did I do the wrong thing? Well, but fuck, I'll, I'll I tell you, the, the credit card helps timing. because right. <laughs> because honestly, like that's. 
that's one of the things is like the seats keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller on airplanes. So like, yeah, Hollywood's a liar. You have to you have to fly like first class pretty oh, much. Yeah. So if you have a credit card, then it's like I, I just did first folded. class. I'm flying go. to 208 first class. Yeah, when worth I first it's the so first worth time it. I ever flew, like I, all I had to gauge off of it was like Hollywood, and I'm like, oh, this ain't shit. And I got on there. I'm six six five. 270 pounds and I'm like what yeah. the fuck is yeah. this shit? Yeah. I feel like you're in a cattle car. It's fucking. terrible. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I've just always appreciated you guys and fucking the little bit we have talked and uh, a couple years ago me and my buddy Bo went was in 208 and like yeah. we met up with them for like a little jog and hike and shit in the morning and I appreciated that because that was during like that was when you were just starting getting into it. It, it was. Yeah. And I, I appreciate it because you made me feel a part of and it gave me accountability. So it's like, yeah. cool, if I ever travel anywhere where Jamie and Pete are, mm -hmm. like, they're not going to let me not do some bullshit. And they're always going to be out and being active. So it's like, yeah. cool, friends to be active with. Well, let's do it again in 208 this year. Fuck yeah, yeah. dude. Well, dude, Fuck I want to yeah. speak to that again since he jogged my memory on the first time we met, right? Um, you know, because we always say all the time, people may not always remember what you say, but they'll always remember how you made them feel. Yeah. Right? And dude, how you made me feel that day, because your idea was fucking dope. I was honored. I get to make the cut to be in this book, fucking killers under five years and under, right? Right. But I, you know, of course I was busy with my head down, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know? But I remember how you made me feel. I remember thinking, I fucking like that guy like i i just remember thinking like i whether i'm in the book or not that dude you know he was one of the good ones yeah. i remember how you made me feel and that shit is like priceless it's powerful and the irony of you bringing that up is because just this week one of my students had that an old copy of the magazine and sent me this picture and for you viewers we'll have mike uh and i just sent it to you josh we'll have mike put it up on the podcast and they just took a snap of that Ah, the third nice. wow. me kyle cotterman and josh wow. at that show at that show yeah you know and someone just sent that to me like two josh, days what, are ago are you tattooing sean it looks like yeah, yeah. Just, he is tattooing sean, i just texted yeah. it to you josh yeah. if yeah, you want to look nice. at right it. above his knee and yeah. he was uh, it was the fedor piece that is he, sean and he hated it that was the fedor melly neko piece man. <laughs> i do remember that <laughs> Good shit. Yeah, and man. then you tattooed her, and she yeah. hated it too because they had the doors open, and she it was, was freezing. freezing. Oh, it was so cold. I remember. Yeah, that. everyone was loading and unloading, and it was like snowing outside. Yeah. So I was, I had goosebumps. I was freezing while he was tattooing me. It was miserable. Mm. Yeah, mm. but it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever stay at Joe's house? I'm just curious. No, I didn't. Okay. I haven't known. So, you know, every year he'd want me to come back and guest. But I love Joe and Irene. You know, God bless my fucking love you, Joe and Irene, if you ever listen to this show. But uh, <laughs> one time he, you know, I finally said yes to coming outside of the show to guest spot. Right. And I'm a man. I like, you know, you're doing first class. I want to have a hotel room. I want to have my own space. Yeah. I wanna have, when I'm out serving the people, I'm going to give my all, but I want a place of refuge to go and collapse and recharge, yes. right? But he was adamant about putting me up, taking good care, you know, whatever. So I was like, oh, I want to receive the gift. Even yeah. though down deep, I'd rather get a hotel room. Yeah. But I fucking love him, right? And I went and tattooed. I went straight to the shop, tattooed all day, all night. Joe actually left at the end of the night. He cl His whole shop clockwork when it's closing time they're fucking done and out i'm like what the fuck no one runs over not even five minutes it's just like, beep, like <laughs> machines they all leave joe's going to the bar they locked up because i don't ever you know i'm i tattoo late into the night I tattoo yeah. till i'm done he <laughs> fuck yeah he went to the bar party down when the bar closed down he comes back and and i'm still tattooing i eventually finish up then we go back to joe's house he's got his own drinks there and he's still going that motherfucker goes hard Anyways, when it was finally time to go to bed, right? And I thought, you know, I can get this whatever, whatever I was expecting, right? <laughs> he fucking walks up. He's got teenage boys at the time, like beds, bunk beds and shit. He goes up and he's like waking his boys up, kicking them out of their bed. And like Holy pulling shit. sheet back. There's like fucking cum socks and shit. Like, hey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, here, Clemmer, this is your bed. And I'm like, the fuck? Oh, <laughs> you know no. what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking couch, bro. I know. Like, 
I just kicked your 13 year old out and I'm getting this little twin bed like thanks you know <laughs> that's <laughs> fucking Damn. awesome it is cause I'll never fucking forget that you know what I'm saying oh my god good yeah. shit speaking of you know and that's what you know you guys by traveling the odds of you getting to have more stories more memories yeah. more great experiences yeah. more relationships um mm -hmm. the odds are just have increased because yeah. you're mm -hmm. out there you know what i'm saying yeah. you never know what magic can happen totally. but by living in that question because we all it's human nature to, let's have a plan this is what we're going to do and we know plans don't always fucking work out <laughs> yeah. no, they and don't. when they don't most of the world is quick to trip like fuck it's all fucked yeah right we all feel that even me i'll allow myself to feel it and then i'll stop and make myself live into a different question that's actually gonna be on my own team and serve me. Okay, fuck, I gotta surrender. Whew. What, what now? What magic? Yeah. And I'll ask, like, okay, what magic is in store now? Like, leaving myself open for magic instead of just falling into straight, even though internally I'm like, yeah. fuck, this is fucked, but I'll live into a better question that actually the answer might fucking serve me. Right. And be open to what other possibilities, something magical can happen. And you guys are living that, yeah. you know? And so no, no matter what your plans are, destiny's got you signed up for magic that you couldn't plan. Yeah. You know, and that's beautiful that you have the courage and the heart to be explorers, to be open to that. Yeah, you thank know. you. It's yeah. definitely scary, but it's it's exciting yeah. at, at the same time. A lot of people have asked us, like, where are you going? Where are you going to be here? You know, like, they're really wanting specifics. And it's no. it's hard because sometimes be I want to be everywhere like, and we'll eventually be around you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I'm, I'm like, not, it's really, not we don't want to yeah. have, like, super, super strict restrictions on anything and be totally. like, we got to be here. We'll and be we there around this yeah. month. Yeah. Yeah. Keep your shit open. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you guys I could are... sense that, which is why I'm honored you guys made time to come here tonight. Yeah. For real. No, thank you, thank so you much for, for having us. Yeah. yeah. It's huge, man. Have you guys ever been to the Georgia Guidestones? No. You should Google it and go there. See, these are the things exactly. that I want to hear about. Like, yeah. um, they're we, they're post apocalyptic. Like, if the world ends, this Rosicrucian dude who gave a fake name built these giant granite pillars, and they're like got new Ten Commandments on them, and they're written in like all the the eleven or twelve major languages of the world, and they're set to where the summer solstice shines through, the winter solstice shines through from above. It looks like the Rosicrucian symbol, but they're out in the middle of the sticks in Georgia. Wow. Um, kind of northeastern Georgia by North Carolina. They're super dope. Yeah. It's just one of those cool, like weird That's conspiracy awesome. things. Yeah, the good news is there won't be a sandstorm. You'll probably be able to see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? Just a couple burning crosses going on. <laughs> 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 they were. <laughs> somebody just told us about the um, Ian uh, at the at Endurance Tattoo when we were doing a guest spot. Just was talking about the Coral Castle or something in Florida, where like this dude. I, I don't know much, so I hope I'm not butchering this story. But like this dude like dug up all this coral that caught that weighs like a crazy amount, and he built these like crazy structures. And he says that he knows the ways of the Egyptian and he used like some type of um, sound vibration to mm. move these massive structures. Wow. And then I guess that he like got robbed or beat up or something. And so then he like moved all this stuff like 10 miles away. And mm. but they're like, you know, 10 tons that like they mm. weigh a ridiculous amount. So oh, wow. I want to like actually learn the whole story about it, but it looks really cool. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I've never heard of that before, but it's stuff like that where I'm like, mm -hmm. there's cool stuff like that yeah. all, over. all over. And mm -hmm. you know, I, you know, Josh, yeah, Area you 51, remember... I'll be down and fucking drive through that place. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like We've our... been to Roswell, like. Yeah. Uh, our I, parents, I... when we were, when Josh and I were growing up, like, often would like I'd wake up and I'd be like in the back seat of our station wagon and we'd be in a different state like I went to sleep in my bed right and I would Didn't wake even up know we were going anywhere I woke up somewhere else yeah like uh, pretty I, often I, I have a lot of memories of waking up like uh, to the smell of a gas station like you know like yeah diesel gas and I, I just said we're, we're, I don't even know what we're doing you yeah know? That happened all the time. And like probably no weird when we were kids, I feel like that was like a what are we doing type mm. of thing. And like none of my friends 
knew about that. Mm. <laughs> like they were like, what, where did you go? Mm. Um, but I'm super grateful for it now, you know, because yeah, it's right. like, my God. you know, the ability to just like hop in and go somewhere and, and you even have it happened to her today. We were leaving somewhere and she was like, I just totally forgot where I, what state I'm in, where, where <laughs> right. I'm at. We came out of a movie theater last the movie night. Theater. I was like, was like I was like, it's really, where well, it was, am I? It was beautiful weather. <laughs> yeah, and for some out. reason, my brain thought we were in Florida. And I was wow. like, no, we're not in Florida. Where are we? <laughs> like, it had nothing to do with two days of shrimp. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fucking awesome, though. Yeah. Uh, Hip, I'm sorry. I interrupted you when you were starting to say something. Do no, you happen to remember? I don't even remember what okay. it was. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're real lit up on this, aren't you? You're oh yeah, dude, I'm go. gonna fucking like go with. I them already right know. Now. <laughs> and whatever we're already building, the vision we have, we got vision for a new shop. But I already know the vision's just expanded. Now we're throwing an RV in the. I was gonna say you gotta have an yeah. aisle nine RV, and yeah. like I, I know a girl who does dude. awesome yeah. vehicle RV. wraps. Yeah. yeah, we wanted to. Well, do. it's fucking happening now. <laughs> I already just can tell. Well, yeah. you know, at the beginning of the year, and Matt, you you told me not to put the horse in front of the buggy because you know we're trying to like open an aisle nine a bigger one that's more fulfilling where we have things where people fly in and we have a major d serve them earl gray or fucking whatever the hell that shit is yeah and fucking, right you know fancy it up making it a, a true experience maybe a massage uh on on hand of yeah so and but i just man fucking i just want a sprinter van dude mm -hmm. to, just yeah. to fucking roll out you know yeah, the, the joke used to be oh what do you want to do live down at a van by the river now Fuck it's like yeah. god damn right yeah. I do. Yeah. Yeah. And a nice big van yeah. and yeah uh -huh. man dude yeah we went for a hike today and we were right by the miami river and we had to hike a little bit to get down there he's like man i wish we could pull the rv down like, there right there right <laughs> like, right i yeah. stayed there yeah. for a month yeah <laughs> But you, me you mentioned kayaking earlier. You yeah. guys like hitting the water too. I think we're gonna try and we do that tomorrow. Kayak tomorrow actually. Yeah, we okay. might kayak the Miami River tomorrow. That's awesome. We saw something yeah. about like a castle, like Loveland Castle, I, I love think it was. Yeah, I go roller skating down there all the time. Yeah, yep. nice. It looked pretty, pretty cool. So yeah, we're yeah. gonna check out this little kayaking. Roller skating. That's adorable. I'd like to see you in roller skating. Fuck he's yeah. fucking he's really good. <laughs> he's really good. Like, he's got the moves and shit. Uh, yeah. like, it's fuck a whole yeah. thing. Like, there's the adult skate. Oh, fuck yeah. yeah. Jam yeah. skating. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Like Hell the yeah. Walkman. And the <laughs> I mean, a fun fact, but I don't know. Roller skating music, if you want to throw in some zap. Roger and Zap, <laughs> they're from Dayton. Mm -hmm. And man, we fucking nice. get, he'll get down. I'm yep. a pretty coordinated dude. I'm even a decent dancer, and I can't skate to save my life. <laughs> but this motherfucker, big I, six five two hundred, and however, I gets actually it. was supposed to. So I just spent another five hundred dollars on a pair of boots because um, my first pair I got were like they're about a thousand bucks. Are they right Dells? Oh uh, yeah, fuck <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I got them. I got them in the car. Yeah, nice. hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. So Thursday they're not night, Rydells, they're not roller skates. Right, <laughs> right. Yep, Man. yep. They are Rydells, and I just Damn. bought a new boot that's got a little bit more padding to it. And you, Thursday nights usually roller skating in Vandalia, but I fucking had to miss it for this shit, dude. This is yeah. fucking great. Yeah, That's so awesome. you skate too then? Or you just no, know I, I used to. No, you I'm just not in like fucking high skates? school. Like, Josh, okay. I remember my I used to live at the roller forever, skating rink. Like, yeah. <laughs> yes. Damn. Yeah, we the, had some my, I, I used to dream about having Rydell's, but okay. I've never had them. Now. Me oh, too. Wow. I grew up right behind the skating rink in Xenia, and I was the kid that was on the speed team, but or I hung around. I was the prospect because I only had Kmart skates. <laughs> I had the I had the rent. <laughs> the, yeah, the, the rentals, yeah. the, the brown, brown rentals. with the fucking orange ones. They yeah. still yeah. got that oh, shit, yeah. bro. Really? Yeah. It's the same ones from when you it's were a kid. Yeah. 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 Surprise me. They just spray them. Yeah. <laughs> the fucking bowling shoe spray. Man, dude, it's fucking good. Josh, I hear because he met you out at the wedding out there. I hear you're a dancer, and I wouldn't I, guess I, that. I, uh, I, uh, I I secretly dance. Yeah, it always surprises people. Like, dude, he said you put dancing. it down. Yeah. It always like, happens at the wait, Humboldt what? show too. Yeah. Dude. I'll fucking dance battle anybody. <laughs> fuck yeah, dude! I can't wait. I want to fuck me and you on the dance floor. We ain't got a battle. We you can fuck, fuck kid and play it him together. On the dance floor? <laughs> <laughs> you heard yeah. that right? Yeah. So okay. Yeah, Jamie and I have a lot heard of what? stuff. You're like, I want to fuck you on the dance floor. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say that? Yeah. Oh shit! A little too much wine. It's all right. 
<laughs> no, Amy and I have a lot of, we've lived a lot of life. Yeah. Like there's so much to be a nine hour, pod, be 20 hour podcast. Like Jamie was a pro skater. Wow. But I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. yeah I was Is this one of Jamie the, right here? The first yes. female uh, skateboarders in, in my area. For yeah. real? What? Yep. We my had, God. We, yeah. we used to have uh, famous people live with us. Like we wow. had a wrestling. Shit. Our Dumb dad question, had a but did wrestling you know that? rink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> our dad like, had huh? a wrestling, a professional wrestling rink in our basement at some yeah, point. Yeah, I used to be like, I remember like growing up with a wrestling ring in my house. And, yeah. Damn. Like, didn't most deaf like live with you guys for a little bit? What? Well, yeah, like we- In my, Tempe, uh, yeah. We had, well, he didn't live. He had, uh, our roommate was really close friends with him and he would come over and he probably stayed at times. Yeah. But, Wow. We just always Black had Star just hanging out. Shit going on in our lives, like whole lives before. I was a photographer. Yeah. Even though I tattooed for thirty something years, I was a full on photographer, which I mentioned I'm getting way back into. Yeah, yeah. Like especially film. I, I got. I bought my dream camera. Yeah. Like I never in a million years thought I could have this. It's a. That's the Mamiya is what it's called. It's just incredible. Like you look down into it. And nice. Everything's backwards. It's it's it's, it's amazing. Mm. But uh. Yeah, it's so weird to look back. Like tattooing has been my whole life. It yeah. seems like, but man, we've lived multiple lives. Wow, we have. That's awesome. You know, yeah. it's really weird to think about. Yeah. When's the last? Because I used time to talk you... to Jamie about about like you should be a tattoo artist, and she was like, "No, nah, not yeah. interested." You know. Wow. She appears well, yeah, for a I while. Mean, I'm seven years younger than Joshua, so like mm. he started professionally tattooing when I was or not even professional. You yeah. started sneaking your friends in through the bedroom yeah, I window say, when dude, I was nine. You're going to tell the pottery wheel story? Mm. Yeah, yeah, he was scratching in his bedroom <laughs> when I was nine, and I, like, blackmailed him into, like, being able to watch him tattoo his friends. Um, she wow. uh, she got, what was it, you or Jim? Either her or my older sister got a little potter's wheel for Christmas, I and it. I took it a I immediately took it apart and took the motor out of it and made a tattoo machine. <laughs> and, and, a, and, and didn't tell her. She was like, where's my part? pottery wheel? Like, he was days like, I'll later, tell you, but you can't tell mom and dad. Yeah. Days <laughs> later, I'm like, Joshua, have you seen my pottery wheel? And he's like, can you keep a secret? And I'm like, I don't know. What, what are you talking about? And he like, pulls me into his room and shows me this tattoo machine. And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck this is. Making fucking and then he like, machines out of pottery He like wheel. pulls up his jeans on his ankle and there's like a little bat, you know? And I was like, what yeah. is that? And then he told me and I was like, I'm telling him. Mom. <laughs> he's like he's in all... the dryer, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Even at a young age, I was just so fucking driven. Yeah. Wow. It's so weird that I see it in my daughter. Like when we went to co- tour the college campus, she just took over. You know, I thought I thought she'd be looking back at us, like, "What do you think, mom and dad?" And she just her questions, and she was like, "I saw myself in her," and I'm like, "Whatever she says, she's gonna do. You mm. better fucking believe it." Yeah. Because she's gonna do it. Mm. You know. <laughs> It's cool to see. Yeah. Fuck yeah. You guys are pretty fucking rad. <laughs> yeah. When's the last time you hopped on a skateboard? Oh, it's been a long time. Has it? Yeah. yeah. I definitely, like, once I started tattooing, it was really a fearful thing where I'm yeah. like, if I fall and Totally. Myself, Break your wrist. Then... Ain't going to be worth it. I right. didn't give a shit. I broke my fucking shin bone last Thanksgiving. He broke scene. his, like, <laughs> like, his knee shin-ish. Yeah, you, Thanksgiving. Skating? Yeah. Skating. yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Jamie, would, our, Jamie would leave in the middle, like early in the morning, and be gone yeah. for ten or twelve hours skating, like huge yeah. half pipes and stuff. <laughs> I wow. would like literally, yeah. I would sneak out in the middle of the night, and like it would be, I would dream about it, and I would wake up and be like, I have to go skate, and wow. got like just leave the house before the sun even came up. And was this in Indiana or where'd you live? This then? was mostly Arizona. Oh, okay. Arizona, yeah. Okay. That was another reason She's for doing young. it so early in the morning because it was super hot. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, but uh, I remember our dad had like one of those really big uh video cameras that would like sit on your shoulder yeah like the news crews you know and so i like borrowed that one day and we just recorded skating and you know none of us we were all so poor none of us had the ability to actually get like a real camera and so somewhere out there i'd love to find them there's like videotapes of like that would be awesome to see yeah skating Mm. and recording and you know with this gigantic camera that we're like literally holding like a boom box on our shoulder (laughs) but yeah those were some of the the best days it's weird you look back and like like she said we were all so poor like i didn't know it yeah just had life. It was just my life. What it was, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, like oh, uh, you know, I remember other kids would would like talk about their parents packing their lunch, and I'm like, your my mom didn't even get up. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Your mom made you lunch. That's crazy. Like I remember Mm. so many weird stories about. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a bad life growing up, but it was very different. Very Mm. different. 
Yours very, was a lot very different. Yours was a lot harder than mine. I was the, right. Like, there was definitely we could get into that another time for sure. Yeah. But there was definitely some stuff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it's weird to, just to reflect on like, like uh, where I maybe get my drive. I think I was so determined to like get out of there. Yeah. You know, and yeah. do something powerful. Yeah. Oh my God. You know, I yeah. wanted to break that chain that had been happening. You yeah. fucking broke you know? it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you broke you it. Shattered. You shattered. Turned out all right. He didn't break it. He made his own fucking you chain. You know, that's right. He made his own Thank fucking you. chain. Yeah, <laughs> man. And he's making. He's still making them. Absolutely. You know, asshole. He made a new one right now. That's why we're all sitting here. This is one of his new chains right here. Yeah. You know, so good. I appreciate man. it. It's funny. He's always had that ability. Like I, looking back throughout our lives, I remember him saying many times, like, "Oh, you should do this. You should." You know, I, I, he was like, you should uh, really focus on lettering and you should like make a book of lettering. And then BJ Betts did it. Mm. And then he, I remember doing a tattoo of like a cartoon ladybug or something. He was like, you should do like animals with really big eyes. And then like Kelly Doty exploded up with her. Mm. <laughs> so it's like just everything. And I'm like, I really should have listened to one of the fucking things that he told me to do. Right. Surely one of them would have panned out. And I was like, fuck you, I'm gonna do my own thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but like he's, he's always had that ability to like just spot it and just know yeah. where it's gonna. He still does. Yeah. You know, you know, this all happened because Hip and I, I signed up for his seminar. Yeah. And then I was all excited and I told Hip, I just signed up. And Hip's like, well, I want some of this. And Hip signed up. And I was like, well, we might as well fucking just take it together. Yeah. You know? And so we met him on Zoom, took it together. We had a ball. Yeah. And after the seminar, we just naturally kept talking. We didn't even want to hang up. And Josh was like, Man, I think there's something here. You guys want to start a podcast? <laughs> and we're like, what? We look at you know? I mean, that was the what, short what version. This, but... What is this, episode number 70 now? Is it really? Yeah. Close. Nice. Close. Yeah. Wow. 59, 60? Yeah. 60? 60? Yeah. 60? Yeah. 60? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Fucking A. 58. We, we committed. We were like, if we're going to do this, let's do it. And we committed to three years. Three years. Josh, we yeah. just realized that. When we were podcast on Monday, we missed our one year anniversary. Oh, we just fucking blew by, yeah. which is awesome because we're so into the doing. Yeah, we didn't right. stop to re measure anything. Yeah. We're just fucking, right. and we just realized because we launched last July first or June first. June first was our like when we dropped, and you know we blew right by that a few weeks ago That's and didn't crazy. Even realize it. You yeah. know, wow, yeah, man, we'll so plan good. something. Yeah. Yep, you're stuck with us for at least two more years, brother. <laughs> yeah, I'm we'll down. have to celebrate yeah. at 208 for sure. You're you're coming, yeah. yeah. Actually, no, I'll be right. at Hunts Vegas. Nice. You know, uh, do you guys know Rock from Platinum Koi? He throws the Hunts Vegas. I was gonna show. say we just saw um, flyers for that on yeah. the indie yeah. table. Yeah, he's a good brother, sweetheart. Nice. Uh, is also a TBM <laughs> member, <clears throat> and. Uh, and part of TBM, one of his visions was to, you know, throw a great show. Well, yeah. he's doing that. Nice. And so I told him I was coming. Awesome. And I said, Hip, you want to go? Let's fucking go. He's like, yeah, I'm down. And then we didn't even check dates. 208s happen the same time. Yeah. So our shop, half's going with Hip yeah. to 208. And the other half's going with me to Hunts Vegas, nice. you know. Nice. Which is cool. First time we're going, whoosh, yeah. you know. Beautiful. You're going to have more fun, Hip. Don't worry. Oh, I already <laughs> know, bro. I already know. <laughs> Gonna eat fucking drink weird drinks at Dave and Buster's. Fucking right. it's going down. We're gonna We're gonna do a hike. Hikes. Hike. Yeah. Fucking maybe fucking canoe. Fucking whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fucking on the fucking on the skate rink. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yeah. Bring, bring them right down, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always stay in in Idaho. Fucking like a. a at least a week after the convention, either a couple days before and after. But they got those hot springs and shit. I always drive up in the mountains so and get lost, yeah. dude. We, yeah. we love that place. We were surprised on how beautiful Boise was. Cleanest wow. city I've ever so been to. Seriously, wow. it really Next is. To Salt Lake? Totally. Yes. I've wow. never been to Salt Lake. Salt Lake is probably the cleanest we've ever seen. I think Boise's cleaner. I think, think so? Salt Lake mm. was a little bit more interesting but I mormons think that's what makes it interesting but it's mormons no. but it's also like massive buildings with huge graffiti, beautiful graffiti like, murals really? next on door there. to each other mm -hmm. and then like a head shop yeah wow. like it's it's the dynamic is very very strange wow. but I'm, I'm here for it I like but it. yeah salt lake is fucking it was rad yeah yeah speaking of do they can you just rent rvs 
Yeah, yeah you can. can I, you? I don't. I wouldn't recommend it from what I've heard. Really? Because like a rental car, you're gonna ride the shit out of it, and mm-hmm. you really shouldn't ride the shit out of any RV. Right. <laughs> like, I mean, careful with our to- dipping our toe in the water, or even before we could just, you know, especially pay cash for one. Yeah. To rent one, even for you to yeah, like, just to get, get the, the yeah. idea of it and yeah. the feel of it for sure. Yeah. Well, I've thought about be. RVs, but I think I, I my dip in the toe is gonna van. have that sprinter yeah. sprinter van. Yeah, that's because, nice. Yeah, Cody's is, Cody's not a sprinter, but it's the same idea and it's awesome. Yeah, it's the what is it? I think like Ford Transit, Ford? Yeah, maybe Ford Transit or something like it's that. It's got yeah. more. It's like higher, taller headspace yep. as well. Yeah. High, yeah. That's because uh, your buddy. I like the Mercedes versions of that's the Sprinter van. Yeah, those are but dope. your your buddy that owns a Ford dealership, yeah. he was telling me about them that night you played, and I was like, oh, okay, I'll check those out too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Cody needed room for his bikes. He puts his bikes underneath his bed, so that he's got this little area in mm. between. Yeah, so like a little cargo area. So he brings cool. his bikes everywhere and BMXs at every mm. fucking skate park. He does he find. roll solo, or does he... Grow him and his girl, or okay. just him? Yeah, he, girl, doesn't, yeah. He, he doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. right on. He's one of the dudes that's like, oh, you have a life changing moment happening. I'll be there. Yeah, and he's there. And he's there. Love like, that. The, the the first week we were in our house, he was there. The, mm. Our bar opened. Our he bar just showed up. We were slammed. We were slammed. He was at the hospital when I had surgery. Yeah. Wow. He's like the like, dude that's just like I'm there. Yeah. Dude, I gotta meet this time. gentleman. Yeah. Nikki's like Cody's, Cody's outside. Solid yeah. yeah. Man. Yeah. So good. Yeah, it's like, been crazy. Man, I want to meet. Well, I've definitely got to take uh, my medication, guys. So I'm gonna tell you, I love you, and I'm super happy that you uh, finally joined us, and I hope we can do this more often. Thank yeah. you so much and for having you. us. I, we love you. I, yeah. I think we we all learned a lot. Which I always say, my favorite podcasts are when I learn something. Yeah. And uh, I definitely learned a lot about about uh, myself, really just reflecting back. Yeah. You know, so again, I know I sound like I'm repeating myself a lot, but our listeners, what a great example. Please mm. take Jamie and Pete's decisions to heart and, and live that life, live that best life. It's not some t shirt. Your mm. life is not a t- saying on a t shirt. Mm. Get up, get off your feet, or get off your ass, I guess, to take it on your feet and <laughs> fucking go. Live that you know, dream. Don't, don't just wait for these moments to, you know, listen to Joe Rogan talk with music in the background and be inspired for 10 minutes. Right. Fucking really do it. Yeah. They're doing it and it's working. It is beautiful. And I want that for you guys. I see you. I love you. And thanks for listening. Thank you. Oh my God. Love you. Salute. Salute.